presentation of Jefferson Pilot Sports, a division of Jefferson Pilot Financial. We've arrived at the point in the college football season that the fans have waited for. The players have this one marked on their calendars. And the coaches know that no matter what happened in the previous 10 weeks, the memory of what happens today will remain for 365 days. It's rivalry weekend, and in this corner of the world, that means one thing. Clemson against South Carolina. The Tigers and Gamecocks have perpetuated the fourth longest rivalry in all of Division I football. A year ago, Clemson embarrassed South Carolina and dashed their bowl dreams. Today, the Gamecocks would like to return the favor. Clemson and South Carolina get it on for Palmetto State bragging rights next. In a tradition started back in 1988, members of the Clemson ROTC have been beating a drum stenciled with the Gamecock and the USC symbol since 6 o'clock Thursday night when they had a pep rally here at Frank Howard Field or Memorial Stadium or Death Valley. And when the sun rose and broke through the fog, you see they were still beating that drum. Welcome to Memorial Stadium in Clemson, South Carolina, where Sitco proudly presents ACC football from Jefferson Pilot Sports, the 102nd meeting between the South Carolina Gamecocks and the Clemson Tigers. Good afternoon, everybody. Steve Martin here along with Doc Walker. What a tumultuous week it has been in Columbia with, of course, uh, Lou Holtz rumored to be stepping down to be succeeded by Steve Spurrier as early as Tuesday. Doc, what effect can it have on this South Carolina football team? Well, it's going to give them a big adrenaline rush. I mean, Lou Holtz is one of the master motivators in the entire country. This may be his best act because Clemson should be set up to be better. But, you know, when you get motivated by a guy like Holtz, the Gamecocks could supersede. Well, the key, of course, is Lou Holtz being to overcome his most embarrassing coaching loss, the loss to these Clemson Tigers last year, and the focus will switch from Dondrell Pinkins to Savelle Newton at quarterback. And Newton's got to make plays, but he can't create, turn the ball over. You know, you can't get so emotional that you missed the game plan. He's going to have to make plays, but do it under control. The Clemson Tigers need this win desperately because they needed to get bowl eligible, and Tommy Bowden needs a big day from Charlie White. It's all on Charlie Whitehurst. He's got the skills to blow this thing up. If he doesn't play smart, then he gives South Carolina a chance. Well, the Toyota keys of the game focus on the Clemson quarterbacks. As far as South Carolina is concerned, this is a team that doesn't blitz an awful lot. they got to get some pressure on Boy, they better bring everybody. Bring the kitchen sink. you got to get to Whitehurst. That's your only chance in this ball game. And he's going up against a team that's number one in SEC in interceptions with 16. He cannot force them. And Charlie's got to be smart. He can't. He's got to take what they give him. Period. When we come back, Mike Hogwood takes a look at the players to watch. They're filling it up here at Death Valley, Clemson, South Carolina, coming up next. The Sitco ACC Game of the Week is being brought to you by Sitco, fueling the greatest of American sports. By Hummer by bb &T. by Geico, by Sonic Drive-In, by Hyundai, and by Napa Auto Care Centers. Game that is filled with tradition. You're looking at one of the greatest in college football, the roughing of Howard's Rock, and the running down for the Clemson Tigers. Let me tell you, down here on the sidelines, this stadium is electric. Wow, is it loud. Right now, let's tell you about, oh, well, apparently a little altercation out on the field, but that is that is part of the, uh, the rivalry here as words have been exchanged between these two teams. I want to quickly tell you about our all-tell players to watch for today's game. We're going to take an eye on South Carolina's running back, Demetrius Summers, and Clemson quarterback, the junior, Charlie Whitehurst. 
If you can be involved in this, which one of these players do you think is going to have the most important role in today's action to vote? Use your Altel wireless phone and send a text message to the number on the screen with the letter of the player you choose or visit jpsports.com to vote online. We'll have the voting results for you in the second half. And again, that's Demetrius Summers who's averaging 5.8 yards of carry and Charlie Whitehurst who they told to forget about the game against Duke, which was a loss. And remember the performance he had against Miami. Well, already we've had flags thrown. Stephen Dock will sort it out all for us and we'll have the kickoff. Tempers are hot. The tradition is here. The rivalry is about to begin from Clemson, South Carolina. Kickoff is next. As Tommy Bowden caught in the buzz and all that's gone on this week between these two teams as the Clemson Tigers came down off the hill rubbing Howard's Rock. The Gamecocks were there to meet them. And near fisticuffs broke out for a minute there. I thought we were in an NBA game. No, please, let's not go back to Detroit. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But the spirits are high. The emotions run high between these two. And for Clemson, of course, and for South Carolina, the memory of last year's 63-17 loss. And, of course, is this the last regular season game for Lou Holt? Many feel it will be. The university does not have an official announcement on this, but they are going to schedule an announcement from Lou Holtz on Monday as to his future. There's the kickoff. And we are underway at Clemson. Corey Boyd will get it in the back of the end zone and come out with it. He's hit. He fumbles. Clemson picks it up. The Clemson Tigers pick up the ball. And listen to the crowd. Yeah, all that pushing and shoving doesn't mean squat if you don't play the game from the neck up. Great hit right on the ball. That's what you do as a kill guy. David Dunham on the hit. The recovery is going to be made by Steven Jackson. And the Tigers are in business in Gamecock territory at the nine yard line. Oh, what a way to begin. Football, gotta love it. Wide gotta lead. love the contact. Dunham on the hit, first and ten. So Clemson deferring the option until the second half gets the football anyway. And there is David Dunham, the man who made the hit. Whitehurst on first and goal at the nine. Merriweather and Harrell in the backfield with him. The pass is complete. It's to Harrell, and he's down to the three-yard line. Could have possibly gone in. Tackle made on the play by Ricardo Hurley. There's Charlie Whitehurst from Duluth, Georgia, the junior. It hasn't been the season he expected. Seven touchdowns, 16 interceptions. And in that 16 interceptions, there's your tips. There's some drops, fumbles. There are things that go along with it, not just Charlie Whitehurst. And that's the one thing I was convinced about him, talking to his coaches, that this kid was much better than that stat shows. Three wide receivers out on second and goal. Clemson working at the South Carolina three-yard line. Whitehurst, handoff, Merriweather into the end zone. Touchdown, Clemson. A three-yard run. The Tigers on the board. Physical up front. That's what Clemson, they'll throw it, but their personality is to control that line of scrimmage. Jad Dean out of the hole to Cole Chasen for the point after touchdown, and this crowd doesn't need any more emotion fed into it. It's got all at once off the game's first play. The point after is good. Clemson has the Gamecocks in an early hole off the turnover and the three-yard run. From Reggie Merrill with a touchdown, Tigers up 7 0. Clemson with an early score off a South Carolina turnover. Two plays after a fumble on the opening kickoff. They go in from nine yards out. The three yard run by Reggie Merriweather, and it's Clemson 7 0. There's Matt Thomas back to receive the kickoff. Different player back there. Thomas has already brought one back in his career for a score of 95 yards two years ago. Jad Dean getting ready to kick it off. For the Clemson Tigers. The cannon sounds the kick. 
out of the end zone, and the Gamecocks will get it at the 20-yard line. They don't want a repeat of last year because last year's game began with a miscue. It began with a big sack. Leroy Hill, Khalid Vaughn, they get after Dondrell Pickens, and the rest is history. 63 points scored in the series, and Charlie Whitehurst went 7-for-7 seven seven in the first quarter and three touchdowns, and they had South Carolina hurting 21 nothing in a hurry. The last touchdown pass of that quarter, right down the middle of the field, the tight end, Ben Hall, and that's how the Clemson Tigers never look back. 63-17, the final. First and 10, South Carolina at their own 20-yard line. Savelle Newton on the pitch. Here's Demetrius Summers to the corner, and he gets tackled at about the 25-yard line. It's going to be a five-yard game. Good surge on the right side of the offensive line for the Gamecocks. Sophomore out of Wallace, South Carolina. He's uh, got most of the reps this season because of the shoulder injuries to Dondrell Perk Pinkins. He's a converted wide receiver, although he's a quarterback in high school. Lou Holtz talked to us about his mechanics. Well, he said you can't change mechanics during the season. I enjoyed that. He said we work on him in the offseason, but for right now we want the kid to go out and just play with his heart. Well, his mechanics are such that he'll be high or low, but never left or right. And off goes to Summers as he turns the corner again. Find the same play, and it's pushed back by the Tigers after a, a very short gain. Our Chevy starting lineups haven't had a chance to get to him yet. Troy Williamson, of course, is the leading receiver in the SEC. And of course, Noah Whiteside, Brian Brownlee has three career touchdowns, two of them against Clemson. Demetrius Summers and Corey Boyd, the Max. John Strickland, an All-SEC and Remington Award list. Watch, candidate at center, Jabiri Levy. Chris Mick, also, it's Jonathan Alston and Nashawn Goddard. Third down now and four coming up for the Gamecocks. They are at their own 25-yard line. They're already in a 7 nothing hold almost seemingly after they got off the bus. Newton out of the shotgun. Pitch to the corner. Brought down, it's Andre Gauls. This fifth-year senior out of Conway, South Carolina. He's flattened short of the first down, and it's going to be fourth down coming. Charles Bennett leading the wave, and he's the big man up front. Two interceptions on the season for Bennett. 13 tackles for loss. Eric Coleman, Trey Tate, Maurice Fountain the front four. The linebackers led by Leroy Hill, Tremaine Billy, and Anthony Waters. And in a talented secondary led by Justin Miller. Three interceptions this year, 13 for his career. Ty Hill, Travis Pugh, and Jamal Fudge. Justin Miller is back to get this punt from Josh Brown. There you see what he's done this season for the Gamecocks. A 39 a kick. And gets this one away. And it takes a Clemson bounce. And for the second straight drive, they'll have an excellent field position. Stopped by George Gauze at the 47-yard line. It is a 34-yard kick. No return. And Charlie Whitehurst will get back out here on the football field. Clemson offense as we set it up here. You see Whitehurst at quarterback. His backs, and of course, Reggie Merriweather, three touchdowns against Miami. He's had five touchdowns in the last five weeks. Jackson at fullback, Bayham, Curry, and Hall, the wide receiver set. Tommy Sharp is in at center. Barry Richardson is just a true freshman. Cedric Johnson, Nathan Bennett, and Marion Dukes. First and ten pass is incomplete. It is tipped out of the hand of Charlie Whitehurst. It will bring up second down. So the Tigers trying to get some offensive identity. We've got a little bit of pushing and shoving. It's probably something we'll have to deal with all afternoon. Well, from the Gamecock standpoint, I mean, they need to freeze it now. You know, it was great to do it, and you fired up and go, but it backfired, okay? So you're down. Now it's time to play football. There's George Goss, Marquee Hall, Marquee Hall, actually. Preston Thorne and Mo Thompson. That's the defensive line. Hand off straight ahead, Merriweather. And he is stuck very quickly by Ricardo Hurley, also Marquee Hall and Preston Thorne. Let's look at the rest of the South Carolina defensive lineup. Rodriguez Wilson, Marcus Lawrence, and Ricardo Hurley. Three good linebackers at all 50-plus tackles. And Bo Simpson, a true freshman from Rock Hill, South Carolina, leads the SEC, leads South Carolina, and is fourth nationally in interceptions. Third down coming now for the Tigers, who've not made much distance. They're looking at third and ten. They're at their own 47. Out of the shotgun, Whitehurst. Throws, has a man out there through the hands of Kelvin Grant. And Clemson will be three downs and out and bring Cole Chasen out onto the field. Taki Muhammad is covering on the play. The, the important part about that play for South Carolina is that they got pressure with three downs. 
and that's one of the keys to the ball game. Their ability to get pressure on Whitehurst. They force him to slide a little bit to his right and were responsible for the air and throw. So that's exactly what they've got to do in order to win this football game. Noah Whiteside is back to get the kick. Miss Cole chasing. 7 0. Clemson in the lead here over South Carolina. Beautiful sunny day, temperature near 70. After a low snap, Chasen gets out a line drive bullet. Whiteside a call for the fair catch and settles down with it down to his 13 yard line. Shot of that block. I mean, that was awful close. That was. You could have got to lay out. They might have had that one. Football fans, register for your chance to win a million dollars in the Bell South Kick for a Million contest. One lucky fan will be given the opportunity to kick for a million dollars during halftime of the 2004 Chick fil A Peach Bowl. Log on to jpsports.com to register, then start practicing your field goals. Bell South, listening, answering. First and 10, South Carolina at their own 14 yard line. First series, three downs and out for Savelle Newton. He's got three wide receivers out into the formation here, and they're coming out no huddle. Three wide out to the top side. He's going to hand off to the inside back to Mr. Summers, and there's not much there for it. Ooh, Corey Groover, backup defensive right tackle, the junior from Johnsonville, South Carolina, comes in for the stop. Watch Groover in the Maryland game. He has a number of big plays. The guy steps in. He hits, he doesn't hit like that number he's wearing. That number puts him at a steel spot. He hits like a linebacker. Three wide outs, Thomas, Williamson, and Boyd to the top side. Williamson is the guy you want to watch. He is second from the top. Savelle Newton on second down in about 11. Has Demetrius Summers in back of him. Here's Savelle Newton, and they're waiting for him. Leroy Hill says, hey, how you doing? Tremaine Billy there said, no, you're not going anywhere. And South Carolina backed up to third and passing yardage. As we take a look at uh, some Hummer scores from Thursday night, Virginia Tech, they're in the driver's seat for the ACC title with a 55-6 win. And North Carolina leading Duke 7-0 in the first and that rivalry at Durham. You hear what Jason Brown said about, about the Blue Devils, the center for the Tar Heels. He said losing to the Blue Devils is like being, getting beat up by a girl. That's all. I think they'll remember there's some that. girls that I know. <laughs> they would whip his butt. Okay. <laughs> we got a timeout on the field called by South Carolina. We'll go away with them. With 9:36 left to play in the first quarter, Clemson seven nothing back after this word from your local station. Clemson leading South Carolina seven nothing. 9:36 left to go in this first quarter. South Carolina looking at a third and 13. They've not been able to move the football at all. In fact, they're in reverse on this drive. A sea of orange greeting the Gamecocks here down 7-0. Savelle Newton will not throw. Handoff goes to Corey Boyd. And Boyd picks his way up over the 20, but it's not enough for a first down. And likely the punting unit will be back on the football field here for the Gamecocks. Well, the Gamecocks have been cautious to say the very least with poor field position offensively that would have been a real big move for Boyd a bit of redemption had he been able to get that first down yeah that's yeah, interesting that South Carolina really at this point doesn't show any inclination to want to throw the football no <laughs> Josh Brown getting ready to kick Justin Miller stayed away from his last 34 yard punt offering this one is a very short one as well, except it takes a Clem uh, South Carolina bounce and will roll dead at the 42 yard line. So, not much of a kick there. Field goal or field position has been important to the uh, Clemson Tigers this afternoon after a 35 yard punt. Let's head to the sidelines and Mike Hogwood. Steve, you look at the stands, it's a sea of orange. You look out on the field, it's a sea of purple. That's become a good luck charm for these Clemson Tigers to put on these purple jerseys at home. It's a tradition they began last year. A lot of people may question a little bit, but Tommy Bowden says he loves the purple. And his seniors went along with him, and on this final home game, big game, they decided it's a purple day. Why not, Mike? They all wore orange yesterday here at Clemson. And the fans in the stands will have it. Flea flicker coming. Charlie Whitehurst has time. Oh, boy. He has a man down there. Curry, he dropped it. Oh, my. He was open too long. He was yeah. open too long for that to work. He waited for a year for that ball to come down and dropped it. 
A guy like Curry, you know he has hands. Great call, number one, to open it up with a throwback special. You're trying to knock the game cocks right out of this middle league. See, he's just open too long. He's in the field over there. Oh, my goodness. Looks back and no son to claim. <laughs> and Whitehurst has an arm. He kind of, what? Well, there's some pressure. So, once again, pressure prevails and is a factor. That's key for the game cocks. And boy, Darrell Shropshire got a hit on Charlie Whitehurst. Here's the throw out of the flats. It's Dwayne Coleman. The locks are flowing, and Coleman's in game cock territory at the 44 yard line. Gain on the play of close to 15 yards. Pro Simpson and Ricardo Hurley in on the tackle for South Carolina. We'll look back on that play, and it could be of significance for South Carolina because that little bit of pressure charged, caused Charlie not to be able to follow through and really get some pump on that football. Would have been seven. That's been the question about South Carolina being able to get pressure on opposing quarterbacks. It's become acute over the last two weeks. In the win over Arkansas, then the loss to Florida last week. We were not able to get to Chris Leak, and he riddled him to six TD passes. He has what Whitehurst with time to throw, scrambles out of the pocket. That's not his strong suit. He'll get down to the 41 yard line and run about three yards. Tackle made by George Dodds and Ricardo Hurley. A little bit of coverage assistance on that in the secondary for South Carolina. Good job taking away the primary receiver. This is so important. You know, emotion plays such a part to play this game of football, but you have to play smart. Right now, South Carolina's making a recovery, and the recklessness is a part of it. Well, I'll tell you, as 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 bad as it seems them not being able to get pressure on quarterback, right. remember still, they are fifth in the SEC in scoring defense. They are a bend but Great no point. break defense. Right now they're getting significant pressure, and they're doing it with three down. So they they really tried to put a a bit of emphasis on the coverage side of it and yet still get pressure. So right now South Carolina's game plan with the exception of the turnover is right where Lou Holtz wants it. Tommy Sharp out of the ball game at center and Dustin Fry is in. There's Lou Holtz. Sixth year at the helm of the South Carolina Gamecocks. You wondered what he would say motivationally to this team. I think he said it maybe two weeks ago when he said he's tired and maybe it's time to retire. Here comes Whitehurst on the Quarterback key for the first down, and he's down to the South Carolina 29 yard line. Wow, wizardry. And that bacon, Steve. Out of four plays, they've taken two out of character, and Hurley makes the saving tackle after a 10 yard game. Watch the penetration there. What a ball faking. Quarterback, you young quarterbacks, that's the importance of following through on fakes. This time it plays dividends on the keeper, and Whitehurst showed you some versatility in his competitiveness as a quarterback. First and 10, Clemson at the South Carolina 30 yard line. Wayne Coleman is the setback. Yosef Kelly, a senior, playing his final home game in motion to the top side of your screen. Curry is a slot man to the bottom. Charlie's looking top. He wants Kelly. Turn around, can't hang on. Curly was covering as well as Jamasia Jackson. Curly, he's got to find the football. I mean, he, he didn't show any coverage skills on that play. Yeah. You, you got to find the buff. You're a linebacker. You get caught on one-on-one -on -one coverage. You're going to close the cushion, which he tries, and then you need to locate the football and become a receiver. He never looks back. Completely lost. Quite lucky that the Tiger band is not playing now because he was no factor on coverage. Is that all the way? That was Joseph Kelly's play to make. Second down and 10 now. Clemson at the game top 30. And off goes to Coleman. Nice pulling block. Coleman turns the corner and is brought down after a five yard game. Pretty good pursuit. Tackle made by Tremaine Tyler and also Coach Simpson. Coach Simpson, you talked about his ability to uh, take enemy passes away, but he also is pretty strong to come up and he'll hit. 55 tackles, Doc. I guess so. Yeah. Not shot. 12 passes defended. It's a five yard game for Coleman. Brings up third down and five. All in. South Carolina territory at the 25 yard line. You know, with mentors gone over this, over this over and over. Don't give up the big play. Stay within what we do, and this defense can be pretty good. Third down and five. Four man rush, pass complete. It goes to Chancey Stuckey. And Stuckey, the former quarterback, still in bounds, now driven out of the 14 yard line. Gain on the play of 11 yards. Fred Bennett pushed him out of bounds. Another Clemson first down. Boy, this is what happens, man. It, it, this is that's all about recruiting. You know, the, the key is to get people who can gain separation, who are just quicker and faster than the opposition. And good play call again. Look at the area here underneath. 
See, I mean, that's a mismatch. Right there, that's 707 yacht practice. The only difference is that they have on a pretty uniform today. <laughs> it's not supposed to be that easy. First and 10 at the 13 yard line. Handoff, Merriweather turns on the Jets. Ricardo Hurley helps out on the tackle, getting up from the bottom of the pile as well. Jermaine Harris and Preston Thorne. Let's take a look at our red roof. Info. Let's look at the a little focus roof. inside here. The purple shirts trying to engage. This is important for the Gamecocks. Now you have to think three at the most. You can't render seven. Red roof inside the end, uh, red zone. 15 touchdowns and 26 possessions inside the 20. Hand off Merriweather. Merriweather breaks tackles his second touchdown of the day. Wow. Reggie Merriweather, a touchdown machine for Clemson lately. His second of the day. You want to learn how to attack in the red zone. How to get in the end zone. Watch this kid. We get a shot at that again. That was a determined run. See, sometimes you can't block everybody. So you just got to lower your shoulders and run over them. Outstanding determination by Merriweather. Here comes Jad Dean for the point after touchdown out of the hole of Cole Chasen. Low snap. Kick is up, however, and it is good by Dean. And the Clemson Tigers have a two touchdown lead here. Strong, on strong drive here, brother. Getting it on the ground is Reggie Merriweather. Takes it in for the second time today. The contact at the four. He runs seven for the score. 17 left to go in this first quarter. Clemson up 14 nothing. They've just marched the ball some 58 yards downfield. Did it on nine plays. Reggie Merriweather's second touchdown. Two key plays in the drive. One a run by Charlie Whitehurst to 14 yards. And then a pass by Whitehurst to Chancey Stuckey for 13. This is Matt Thomas. He'll bring it out. Matthew Thomas at the 15. And he's upended by David Dunham. Dunham, the hit machine. Oh, he hit the fumble. Let's watch the touchdown again. But Merriweather's going to run right through Marcus Lawrence. See, right there. The middle linebacker goes in and he hits him. He doesn't lock up to make the tackle. So he forgot where he was at on the field. And Merriweather, once again, with the bull like tendencies, dominates him to score. South Carolina starting inside their own 20 for the third time, the second time this afternoon. Well, they got to man up. Now, the Gamecocks have got to man up. We'll be on the emotion. We'll be on the fact that Coach Holtz is going to retire. You want to win a ball game, you got to make some plays. And Savelle Newton's got to be the man on the spot. He's going upstairs to Troy Williamson. Oh, off his shoulder pad with the coverage of Ty Hill. Big play. Well thrown ball by Newton is in strong. Very nice. Very nice throw. But you know what? You going up against Hill, Miller, two good corners. When the ball's kind of hanging in there, sometimes receivers got to make a decision on this. Is this going to come to me or do I go up and get it? Oh, see, if you go up and get it, you control your own destiny. If you wait on it to come down, then good corners like Ty Hill gets a hand in there and takes away your dreams. Second down and 10. Inside handoff. Looks like it was, it was not Summers on the play. That was Corey Boyd. And Boyd's not going very far as Clemson is really manning up as far as defense is going to go down the body. Well, what Troy Williams shows you is that he can get it. Our Hummer scoreboard, North Carolina, still up by a touchdown on Duke. A battle for the victory bell. Miami by 21 over Wake Forest. Do you think the Hurricanes are mad? A bit. <laughs> Oklahoma by a touchdown over Vandal. We got third down here and eight to go. Gamecocks better get angry. Here's Savelle Newton rushes on pass incomplete drop by Matthew Thomas. Lou Holtz does not want to see this much of his punter this afternoon. No, not at all. But Clemson is not in the mood to give things away today. Clemson's going after it. The Tigers need this game to be bowl eligible. Tommy Bowden has really been caught in the pincers of this Lou Holtz to Steve Spurrier pass off. And of course, he's had his own demons uh, to deal with with the loss to Duke last week after beating Miami. Here comes the punt by Brown. And his best of the day. It's a hanger. And it takes a South Carolina bounce. And this will be the worst field position that Clemson has had all day long at their own 36 yard line after a 39 yard punt. 
talking Division One football. I mean, everything's not going to be perfect. You got to go back and make a play. And not that it's you know, right on the money because it wasn't. But when you're trailing, you're on the road, and you talked all that trash when Clemson ran down the field. See, if you don't challenge a guy, talk the talk, you got to walk the walk. Exactly. And right now, the Gamecocks are pretenders because they had a lot to say, but I haven't seen much yet. Yep. It's Clemson doing the walking right now. First and 10 from their own 36. Whitehurst hands off Mary Lemon. Broke two tackles, broke another one. Still trying to break it. They're still trying to get him down. And then they're talking and yapping again. Yeah, well, they got a lot to say after the play. But they what gotta, counts is when the ball is snapped, what you do then. He made three hard yards and then took on four game pops and barked them all out. In our open, we talked about the emotion. What happens is that it can work for you or against you. Now, I know the game cops want to win this one for, for Lou Holtz. No doubt in my mind about that. But you don't negate all the things you practice from training camp on. Lou's giving them a strong fundamental basis. But now you can't go down to play street ball. Four wide outs for Clemson on second down and seven. Clemson went huddle through the first couple of series. They've gone no huddle here. This is interesting because for the first year, South Carolina has a new defensive coordinator, Rick Minner. He was head coach at Cincinnati, right. and they professed the no huddle offense. So that's what they, he, he's been able to talk to his kids about it all week. A good physical football game. Now, that I love. Now that is Rod Walters, who is the director of sports medicine or the trainer here for the South Carolina Gamecocks. See what uh, the tail end of this play is all about. And they're slugging and pushing and shoving. Well, there's been a lot of that push and shove and kick in a minute. Now apparently there might be they're changing the official hit, official got hurt. Got hit. Yeah. These guys have been all year in the weight room, man. Guy mess around and hit you in your skull, hit the temple, you out. And uh, Rob Walters escorts the side judge off the field and to the locker room area. And we come back second down now and seven. Four wide outs for the Clemson Tigers. They'll hand it off to Dwayne Coleman, and South Carolina stiffens the wall. Jermaine Harris leads the charge and flattens Dwayne Coleman after a two yard gain. Let's go to the sidelines in Mike Hogwood. Steve, this is a Southeastern Conference officiating crew here today. And in the Southeastern Conference, they always bring an extra official. And today, just so happens, it was a referee who had the uh, day off. So uh, they do have an extra official to go out and compliment the crew. It's something they do every week uh, in the SEC. Bobby Moreau, the side judge, was the injured official going off the field. Clemson now facing third down. They've been one of two on third down. They're looking for third and four. Out of the dog. Yep, they've got a blitz going. The hot read is Grant, but it's way out of bounds. Her name Tyler covering on the, uh, was blitzing on the play. It was a great delayed blitz, and it was a great pickup. See, this just my guy. See, that's why I like Holmes. I mean, this guy's totally in control, and he understands that they're not going to win it unless they execute. You know, all the humping and jumping and wow, wow, wow. That's great. Yeah. You know, if you're cutting a, a, a CD or something, right now, you got to play between the lines when the whistle blows and play it fundamentally sound. Gamecocks have a chance for their best field position of the day. There's Cole chasing. Tough snap. Got it away. Good line drive kick. Whiteside back up to his eight. Flattened inside the five. Clemson special teams have been outstanding. Fudge was in on it, but Rigsby, the long snapper, was down on the play. 49-yard punt. This is what I'm talking about with Coach Holt, see? That's why I'm crazy about Luke. But he's not afraid about what you think about him. He's going to get the job done, and it's about building character with young people and showing them who's in charge. Lou Holt is in charge of that sideline. Paul Chasen got off a huge 49-yard punt. The Clemson special teams responded, and South Carolina now has their worst field position of the day. I thought they were headed for their best. Savelle Newton out of the shotgun. Down 14 nothing. Hand on. Corey Boyd, and he's up over the 10-yard line. Nice gain out of the tackle of Jamal Fudge. Corey Boyd is a sophomore from Orange, New Jersey. Talking with Lou Holtz on Thursday, amid all the controversy, as he was finishing up his conversation with us, we got the feeling that he feels with guys like 
a Corey Boyd, the program is in good hands. Oh yeah, he's got good young people. Lou, I mean, he was enthusiastic about it. Good at that right tackle and off from the right guard. They've been right-handed, if you will, in the running game. Second down and two. And off Corey Boyd again. Clemson looking for it this time and not much there. Gaines Adams leads the charge from the defensive end spot. Go to Yahoo Sports to see JP Sports ACC football games. Yahoo Sports also brings you live game audio each week for dozens of schools from every major conference. Listen to your favorite team's games all season long for only $4.95 a month from Yahoo Sports College Broadcast. Get it now at sports.yahoo.com. We're at a critical juncture in this ball game. Clemson can, can blow it up. They can force a turnover. If they can get another seven quick, it would be pretty tough for the Gamecocks. The Gamecocks can right the ship now if they get a first down. They got to keep the chains moving. Well, they agree with you, Doc. They're going to take a timeout here at the 58 second mark. This is a third down conversion that they have not yet made this afternoon, and they need one here today. So they're going to talk it over with Lou Holtz on the far sideline. Let's take a look at this last play again and see how Clemson responded to Corey Boyd. Going inside, there you see the big people. A little high, Chris White, 60. They're on the, that's not where you want to be in the offensive line. You want to stay a little high and keep driving. Well, Lou had mentioned to us in our conference, he's had trouble with his guards this yep. year. He says uh, when they, when teams do twists and stunts, he says, I don't know what to expect out of them. Well, when you're young and you haven't seen a lot of games that they're in Clemson, they'll take some angles on you because you, they know you're smart if you're young. But I'll say this. To get one first down, to get one big play, can turn it all around because emotionally now, the game comes at the end of this. They really want this, but they need a play to back it up. Let's not forget how close Troy Williamson was on the deep post. Well, if they don't get one here, they're going to have to give Clemson field position again. South Carolina is yet to make a first down today. They're 0 for 3 in third down conversions. Gonzi Gray is in the backfield along Savelle Newton. Three wide outs all to the wide side of the field. Newton on a keeper. Needs three yards. He's very close to it. Let's see where the mark is. He needed the yard line to get was the 14. And he's almost there. And they're going to, it's close enough to call for a measurement here. Once again, they favor the right side of Austin and Goodard again. And Savelle Newton. From Wallace, South Carolina, is just a sophomore. He was a wide receiver last year, and it looks like oh, sure. that's how close they yeah, are. They did sure. not make it. Are you sure? Now everybody wants to go for it. So everybody's going to wave. But the question is, if you ask for it, you have to come through with it. Yeah. See, Holtz is he can't there. take a chance. I've down been here too long in this game to get emotional over it. Yep. We're going to do what the percentages say. If you were that good, you would have picked up the yard in the other two possessions. See, that's what kids don't understand. Yeah. Let's go for it now. Well, you had three shots at it. Yeah. Now we're going to punt, put our defense back out, play the percentages. Well, you said it before. Let's not be afraid to punt. Don't be afraid to punt, ever, especially when you're on enemy enemy territory and you're at a opposing stadium like Death Valley. Josh Brown got off a 44-yarder last time. Justin Miller has yet to return one here. But the way it's going, he'll get his opportunities. It's blocked. Gaines Adams with the block. Clemson scrambling after it. Did they get it? Oh, that's smart. That's picked up by up. Brown. That's heads up. He may have picked up the first down. That's heads up. Josh Brown stayed with the ball after it was blocked. Recovered the fumble. First down, South Carolina. Hey, sometimes it helps to be lucky. You know what I mean? Because Josh looked like he was in slow motion with the punt motion. I don't know what was going on in his mind, but you backed up deep. You got to get that ball off your foot. Lay out on it by Adams, 93. Now here's what Josh showed you athleticism. He went after it and he gets off the ground. See, he follows up. He went the belly flopper, and now he's an athlete and a playmaker. And he may have gotten some help from George Gobbs, who as he was going down, may have pushed the ball back from the two Clemson players who were trying to take it into the end zone. Oh, what a turn of events. <laughs> South Boy. Carolina gets the play that they need, their first first down of the day. Josh Brown got it. A nine-yard run when they only needed inches. Savelle Newton back at quarterback out of the shotgun. Handoff goes to Corey Boyd. Can't turn the corner. Travis Pugh is there. 
Also there, Eric Coleman and Tremaine Billick. Potential late hit at the end of it. See, that's where you. I mean, John Strickland's a good football player. He didn't have to hit you late. He's capable of knocking your butt off the ball in regulation. So he's got to be smart about this thing because it could have very easily been called. Okay. Josh Brown, the flavor of the moment here for South Carolina, making the heavy play that turned disaster into an opportunity. Second down and 11. And the end of the first quarter has come. The emotions still run high here at Death Valley as the Clemson Tigers have a two touchdown lead on their arch rivals from Columbia. Reggie Merriweather with a couple of scores. The hit is hard. The emotion is high. Clemson 14 nothing after one. Welcome to Death Valley as Jefferson Pilot Sports and Sitco present our ACC football game of the week. We step out of conference this week for the 102nd renewal of the rivalry between Clemson and South Carolina. And what a start we get off to. A fumble on the opening kickoff by the Gamecocks. Two plays later, the Tigers were in the end zone and they've scored one since. South Carolina with the football. Second down and 12. They're in their own territory, and a good tackle on Demetrius Summers made by Charles Bennett, who's had a sensational year. The junior from Camden, South Carolina. Take a look at our first quarter stats, and the Tigers dominating in uh, passing and running the football. Notice that the Gamecocks have no passing. Yeah, that, that's a little odd. Tell you what, they run right. They're they're extremely right-handed. So Charles Bennett, I mean, they're running right into him consistently, and they're going to have to. Diversify a little bit, a little change of direction. The last couple of plays have gone for not. Third down and 11. Savell Newton, the pass blitzes on. He'll step up and run the football, and he can do it. Nice spin. He gets out to the 20. He's going to be shy of the first down. Leroy Hill completes the tackle. And once again, the punting unit will be on for South Carolina. Well, that was a complete jailbreak. I mean, 11 so Clemson wasn't fooled. They had an idea what was going to happen, but he didn't get any blocking up front. So Newton comes to the sidelines. Of course, Savelle Newton playing in place of the season starting quarterback, Dondrell Pinkins. Pinkins, of course, has uh, had a shoulder injury, started the first two, but then has been intermittent since then. Josh Brown back to punt. Josh Brown, the hero of the moment, gets off the punt. Josh speeded it. He put some motor in that operation that time. And it takes a nice South Carolina roll down to the 27 yard line. Yeah, third and 11, Steven. So, obvious pass. Now you get the inside game here. Look at the rush in. So, right there, he has no chance to look downfield. And then once you know your guy's running your quarterback, you got to go out and pick somebody off. The effort is there. But the Clemson Tigers were just better. Josh Brown got off a 53 yard punt that time as Tommy Biden surveys the field. I asked Tommy what he was going to talk about motivation to his team and he said you're not going to let Lou Holtz provide the motivation for them. Let's get out there and get a bowl good. Here is Coleman breaking two tackles and then Coach Simpson comes up to make a nice stop at the 31 yard line. It's a gain of about four on the play. Let's head to the sidelines and Mike Hogwarts. Some bad news for the Clemson offense. Reese Curry has in, injured his thumb. They've had to take him to the locker room. Uh, I asked if it happened on that play where he dropped that one pass. And he said they didn't know that that might have been the play, but he has injured his thumb. He's in the locker room. They don't know if he'll be able to come back. That takes another big receiver, the biggest receiver in the ACC in terms of receiving yardage off the field. Average starting position. Look at that. Tigers at their own in 48. And South Carolina at their own 14. The whistle will blow this play dead. And this is our first penalty in game. We actually had offsetting penalties to start the game this afternoon. <laughs> uh, South Carolina and Clemson got chippy when the when the uh, Tigers came Dead down. Ball. The hill. Prior to the snap, false start number 65. Penalty with five yards to the previous spot. Bottom up, turn of the second down. I like the way Mr. Jackson and his staff has officiated this game because. They could have called a dozen flags by now, little things, yep. but they've allowed them to play and allowed the emotions to run and yet not get totally out of control. Well, that's they've a good issued, judgment. They've issued some warning. Yeah, that's good they, judgment they, in that. They're talking to the teams right now. Second down, 10. Coleman busts out of a tackle. Code 
Simpson will drive him out of bounds. Beautiful. And it's a 14-yard gain out to the 41-yard line. It looked like Marcus Lawrence had stuffed this play for the game, Cox. You go inside, you're going to see they don't give up a lot of ground. There he is right there. And then he doesn't get credit for it. And so far today, Marcus appears to have had a problem locking his arms up because he's ferocious. He's at the point of contact. He brings the body, but he's yet to lock up. Merriweather, or rather Coleman, is from Naples, Florida. He's a junior. And also a great block on the corner by the fullback, Stephen Jackson. First and ten at the 40-yard line. Back to throw Whitehurst on play action. Gets hit as he lets it fly. He's going downfield. The Bay hand it's intercepted. Jamesia Jackson has picked it off. His second career interception of the season. Jamesia Jackson picks it off for the Gamecocks. And Clemson turns it over. They went pressure. First pipes. Watch this. Whitehurst play action fake. And there it is right there. There's the hit. Silas with the pressure, rip shot, and that allows the secondary to recover. Now Whitehurst didn't get a chance to really follow through again. Watch the play right there, right at the end. Now Jackson is able to take a bead on the ball, follows it, catches it at his highest point. Great job on the secondary. Return at interception for a touchdown in the season opener at Vanderbilt, and he gives South Carolina the football. Demetrius Summers tries to go right again. Sneaking around the block of the center, but coming up to make the tackle, Donnell Clark. In for Eric Coleman at that defensive tackle spot. Well, they're determined to, to gain some success on that right side. I can understand. I'm hard hit it as well. Well, one of the reasons is their starting left guard, Chris White, was out. He's back into the lineup, though, I've noticed here in the last couple of plays. And they've used Fran Person. Who have played seven different positions. Yeah, you gotta go back to Williams, though. You, you gotta give your receiver a shot. Here comes Summers. Turns the corner. Oh, what? Takes some shots, but gets himself out to the 30-yard line. Boy, Fudge. Fudge got the bad end of that one. Yes, he did. That's the old hammer and nail principle. You always want to be the hammer. But sometimes you end up being the nail. Oh. And that's it right there. Oh, 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 oh. See, when the back squares up the shoulders, I love that. Boy, Summers, that's the way to finish the run. Six yard gain on the play. Actually, seven, third down and three. Summers, six carries, 13 yards. White side and Boyd are split one way. Williamson split to the short side of the field. Savelle Newton to throw. Has time. Has a man up. There it is complete. The Boyd for the first down. Big play. Savelle Newton to the 39-yard line. It's a gain of nine. Yeah. Boy, well, they won't get style points, but they definitely got it done. Because that didn't look. <laughs> look, they came out of the huddle. They, they really didn't look like they knew where they wanted to go. But he gets it out there. And a good catch. And you get a chance to move the chains for the first time and turn things around. Boyd again goes up got to make the catch again fudge defending on the play for the tigers it's the only guy besides the punter who's gotten the first down <laughs> <That's right. laughs> this afternoon first and ten south carolina at their own 39 yard line williamson split to the short side of the field here comes boyd in motion the option is savelle newton up ahead and he gets about three yards on the play clemson sniffed it out pretty good leroy hill turned it up inside you look at Savelle Newton. 10 20 left to go in the second quarter. Newton playing in place of Dondrell Pinkett once again. Pinkett's threw on the sideline. He's had a sore shoulder, bad shoulder, rotator cup problem on the throwing arm. I saw him throw in pregame and uh, he did not yeah, look good. It's tough. Well, the game cost could very easily be down 28 to zip in this ball game. So. They have a lot to look forward to if they can make it happen. Trying to turn this turnover into something. Newton throws. It is complete to Williamson. And Williamson is brought down a yard shy of midfield. Ty Hill on the tackle. So it's another seven yard gain. It'll be close to a first down. But he knew what he needed to be. And that's what I'm impressed by. You know, receivers, you got to know where the sticks are. Now, this time the quarterback makes a little minor adjustment. Now, watch this right there. See, he lowers those shoulders and tries to bust right through. See, Williamson again squared the shoulders up and tried to get the yardage for a first down. And he did. First and ten, move the sticks. 
Williamson split wide to the top. Corey Boyd in the slot below him. White side is wide to the short side of the field. Here's the option. Newton, we've got a flag down on the play that'll stop it before it even happens. And it's going to be charged against South Carolina. Royal Jackson to make the call. That is a dead ball prior to the start. Ball starts number 80. Nearly his five yards from the previous spot. Thought about returning the first down. And there's, oh, look at this. Duke on a block punt and return for touchdown leading in that game. Elsewhere, Miami by three touchdowns over Wake Forest. Demon Deacons and well may be dry after uh, so many close calls this season. First down and 15 for South Carolina. Raw play. And into his own back. That slowed down Summers. He gets a couple of yards, maybe one yard on the play. Brought down Charles Bennett, sniffed the play out. Coleman up front, good penetration. Go back to that Duke Carolina game. And you mentioned that in the open. Uh, when you make a statement like Carolina did, one young man, the center, yeah. uh, saying that if we lose, it's like losing to a girl. You have to beat them. Yeah. I mean, yeah. flat out, you have to win. If not, then you were in a world of trouble. And you believe me, the Blue Devils are so motivated behind a statement like that, which well, is really, uh, it's degraded. Well, they picked up a huge win over these Clemson Tigers last week. Summers, seven carries, 14 yards. South Carolina hasn't been able to establish anything on the ground yet. Savelle Newton trying to do it in the air, has Williamson out there, but double coverage there on the play. Sampson and Hill are out there to cover, and it's incomplete. And Coach Holtz told us that. If he would be off, he'd be high. And we're talking about the, 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 his delivery, the fundamentals in that. That's a throw. You, you have to make that throw. And if you're not comfortable with that, then go back to what he has comfortable with. He threw a heck of a post. Yes, he, he threw did. it out there. He just needs to get there a little sooner. Savelle Newton brings him out, looking at third down and 14. You better believe the Gamecock defense is much appreciated. We've got a little extra rest in this drive. We'd like some more. There's the pursuit. Savell Newton in retreat. Fountain misses a tackle. Newton gets some extra time. Throws it downfield for Boyd. He made the catch. Touchdown, South Carolina. Oh, brother. And no flags. Game on now. Wow. Redemption. That's redemption. Boy, he'll vote. 54 yard pickup and a touchdown for Corey Boyd. His first touchdown reception, even though that he's the second leading receiver on the team with 32 catches. And today, he's the guy that got knocked out and blown up on that kickoff return and started the avalanche of scoring for Clemson, and now he's back. That's redemption. Josh Brown on the kick the point after, out of the hold of Bowers, Jeff Bowers, Joey Bowers, rather. There's the hold, there's the kick. It is good. And the complexion has changed somewhat in this game. Clemson dominated the first quarter. South Carolina wants to take hold of the second. Savelle Newton was in retreat and then hooks up 54 yards to Corey Boyd, whose momentum takes him into the end zone. Gets on the scoreboard, trailing Clemson 14 to 7. They do it on a 54 yard hookup, Savelle Newton to Corey Boyd. And of course, it goes seven plays, a key fourth down play or third down play. Got it happening. Ball goes out of the end zone. Justin Miller will not return it. It'll come back to the 20. Now let's look at the entire field. Well, you see Fountain here at the beginning. Watch him on the pass rush. And what's important is how he's going to be able to loop around and get outside of it. And then you watch this void kind of come up brought right in there. There's a throwing lane. And then he goes out and fudge and heel try to converge here at the bottom. He try to converge. He makes a good catch on it. Boyd stays with it, gets the catch and the score. Eight plays, 77 yards, 407 to execute. It was set up by Jamasia Jackson's second career interception. So both teams have points off turnovers this afternoon. 
Reggie Merriweather carries bodies out close to a first down, out to about the 29-yard line. Making the tackle, Bennett and Jackson. Clemson has got to re rekindle that energy they had because they kind of backed off just a bit, and South Carolina made the necessary plays. And now we're just one score away if the Gamecocks get into where you're back to even, and you don't want to give up that energy and momentum you had. Field possession getting worse and worse for the Tigers since they picked up the first possession of the game at the Gamecock nine. That's a fumble on the snap. Good penetration there by South Carolina. Man on the nose. Looked like Marquis Hall and had a great beat on the football. Now that's reestablishing the line of scrimmage. The Gamecocks, I mean, they blasted off. They, it's as if they knew the cadence. You look at penetration is key. Low man wins. We can't even see the number, but believe me, there's a Gamecock at the bottom of that pile. Oh, he launched right on the snap, and that messed up the snap. Of course, this quarter, I'm the quarterback. The quarterback has got to go non-rhythmic. He's got to go on sound or go on three. Control that. Third down and 11. Third down and one, rather. I'm sorry. Here's Merriweather. He picks up the first. And drag tackles out to the 39-yard line. He's a beast. He is a beast. Two touchdowns, one on the third play of the game. After the kickoff was fumbled, he took it in three yards. That made it 7 0. And the second came at the end of a march of seven yards. He got hit at the four, but tumbled in for the second score of the day. Explosive runner. I'll tell you what, uh, that goes through weight training. And, uh, you know, Coach Burns, I've talked to him about this young man. He says he's diligent. In the weight room, you can tell great lower body strength. First and ten from the 40. Whitehurst to throw, gets it up there, and it's caught by Bayham. Curtis Bayham at the 49 yard line. Fred Bennett runs him out. Bayham, a junior from New Orleans, Louisiana. See, this is what they make look easy. Little throw and catch, offensive line, they're stout, no pressure. There you see the arm, the hands. Good positioning, and what I like about it, it's a good wide receiver. What Curtis did was he gave himself room to work with on the sidelines. Good news. Aries Curry is back in the lineup, and he's split to the top side of your screen here. Inside him is Chancey Stucky on second down. And about a yard. Some good news for Tiger fans. Well, yes. Yeah. <laughs> good news for the game, Tiger. That's for sure. Here's Dwayne Coleman. He steps inside, and he got the running room. Coleman. Brought down by Jamasia Jackson, but he's in Gamecock territory at the 36 yard line. I just hope to Coleman and Merriweather watch 35, the fullback right there. So, oh, once again, another big time collision by Steve Jackson. Steve Jackson is just a human sledgehammer. This kid loves to go in and mix it up. 6 2, 255 with a great football attitude because he didn't care about carries, he cares about trying to knock your face mass off your cage. His hometown, Columbia, South Carolina. Here's the handoff. Coleman to the corner. They get blocking out there, but good pursuit by South Carolina. Preston Thorne followed the play and shut it down as it got to the 35-yard line. Not much gain on the play, maybe one. ACC football from Jefferson Pilot Sports is brought to you in part by Toyota. Glad to have you here on a beautiful sunny day, hazy, mild in November. Well, there's been a lot of talk around the Greenville newspaper that they're thinking of moving this game to Thanksgiving weekend. Second down and nine. Whitehurst to throw. It's through the hands of Chancey Stucky. Yeah. He wasn't ready, and he was also covered off of Will. Uh, Rodriguez that Wilson. Time Wilson. Yeah, Wilson was all, all over me, ate him up. I like Wilson too. Heck of an athlete. And he's got great athleticism, moves around well. And guy who can get to the quarterback will also lock you up, tackle well. And cross South Carolina, 50 year senior. Whitehurst, 4 for 11, 41 yards, and one interception. His 17th of the season that he's thrown. Third down coming for the Tigers. Will dog. Whitehurst steps up and throws it away. The, the formula is once again, this time Lambert comes in. When they get a hat on Whitehurst, they get good success. They being the Gamecocks. 
It's imperative. I didn't know they'd be able to get that kind of pressure on them, but they've been able to do it. Sacks don't necessarily mean pressure, but uh, this time they didn't get the sack, but they, as you said, they pressure. put a helmet on the numbers, and it caused an interception earlier. That time it caused them to throw it away and out of bounds. And the end of punt is going to be cold chasing. Let's well, see what you're seeing now. Look, coaching all just blocking and picking up stunts. You know, coaches work on this, and Tommy's kind of laughing at it because he understands. You took go with all we can practice. You want to see the results. Jason will try to squib this kick down, and oh, what a catch! Down at the one-yard line, Cole Jason does the trick. He had 35 yards to work with. He used all but one of it. Joseph Kelly downs the football. <laughs> Clemson 14 7 back after this word from your local station. <laughs> Death Valley a wash with Orange. South Carolina on their own one foot line. First and 10, and they've got a new quarterback. Dunwell Pinkins is back in the lineup. Throws on first down complete to Troy Williamson. He's got the first down. At the South Carolina 13-yard line. Here's Dondrell Pinkins. He's a fifth-year senior out of Camilla, Georgia. Bruised shoulder for 2,127 yards last year. You see what he's done so far this year. He's the senior. He's got the experience. He's got four touchdowns. Sure made that look easy. Yeah, sure did. First and 10, 12-yard gain. You know, South Carolina's best field position is their own 24-yard line. They were 99 and a half yards away from the end zone. Here's the handoff, Donzi Gray, and he's out over the 20, all over the 15. Tackle made on the play by David Dunham. Anthony Waters as well on the play for the Clemson Tigers. Steve Martin here along with Doc Walker and Mike Hogwood. Glad you've joined us here in Clemson, South Carolina for Sitco's presentation of ACC football. Clemson with two first quarter touchdowns, one on the third play of the game. After a fumble on the kickoff, two plays later, they're in the end zone. Reggie Merriweather with two touchdown runs. And then South Carolina battle back, Savelle Newton hitting Corey Boyd on a 54 yard touchdown strike. Pinkins has room, has poise, wisely throws it away. He was not outside the pocket, or was he? He had no receiver in that area, so he, he did wise to. Get as close as he could to get outside that tackle box. Lou Holt looking at his team now, face with second down. Let's look at it again. Take a look. And trying to get the ball down fair seat, slides out. So there's the imaginary line there, yeah. so he is outside. He got it. Yep. Good call, good non call by the officials. South Carolina, two of seven on third down. Looking at third and eight. I have to go with Williamson. He's impressed me. He's split wide down to the bottom side. That's Boyd, the touchdown maker in motion. Pinkins looking to Boyd's direction. Ground ball thrown to Matthew Thomas. He's thrown to the field, but Clemson taking the precaution because it was behind the line of scrimmage. <laughs> That's Don't the beauty of fullback. Yeah, it was the beauty of football. Yeah. Full contact. Play within the rules. And if he gets a, a bit abusive, abusive in the process, then hey, so be it. That was a good stand by Titus. Yes, it was on great field position. They had him down a half a yard yeah, out yeah, of the end yeah. zone. <laughs> Clemson, South Carolina is good to get out here for the 15. Give Josh Brown a little room. Brown's had a lot of action today. Justin Miller is five yards into his own territory at the 45. The kick he takes it out of the way of the rush and gets a line drive out of it. Miller gets a return and a nice open field tackle by Gonzi Gray at the 49 yard line. It's a 42 yard kick and about a five to six yard return. Timeout on the field with 3.51 left in the first half. Clemson 14, South Carolina 7. Nice late autumn day here in Clemson, South Carolina. The Upstate splendid in the beauty of orange today. 14 7. Clemson Orange leading South Carolina. Gamecock, Garnett, and Black. And it is the Tigers in Gamecock territory at the 49. Charlie Whitehurst, 4 of 14 with an interception. His most reliable weapon is right there, Reggie Merriweather. And he carries 
A hard yard to the 48. Daryl Shropshire. And it is the senior from Kershaw, South Carolina, making the tackle. Shropshire has been one of the Gamecocks that has been in there getting first hits. But the Coleman Merriweather combination has been able to gain yards after the first initial contact. So if South Carolina can lock up a little bit better and be stop that run, then you got a chance to force some turnover. Merriweather, eight carries, 41 yards, two touchdowns, second down and nine. Play action for Whitehurst. Throws complete to Chancey Stucky. Nice catch. Goes to the ground at the 43 yard line. Modest gain of five yards, and Rodriguez Mills Wilson makes sure it goes no further. Coach Mentor wants his game cops to keep this game in front of him. That gives you a chance. But Clemson thrives off that big play, man. You know, sooner or later, they're going to go for it. One of the things I enjoy watching Michael Kane orchestrate this offense is that eventually they're going to get over, over the top. Four wide receivers for Clemson on third down and five. Whitehurst goes down in the pocket. Gets the ball. Puts the football on the ground. The sack made by Mo Thompson. He separated the ball from Whitehurst. It's recovered by Clemson, but it brings up fourth down. Good pressure by South Carolina. And Rick Mentor's guys in white are playing the tails off now because they're doing what, what they weren't supposed to be able to do. And that was get sufficient pressure on Whitehurst. Well, they've done their job. Now, if they can get some production out of the quarterback position, then they have a chance to be competitive in this ballgame. Cole Chasen getting ready after the eight-yard loss to cut on fourth down. You see what he's done today. Noah Whiteside standing at his 10. Chasen gets off a beauty. Fair catch call for him. That's a special team. Man. They've been awesome. And that comes out to the 12 yard line, first and 10. Hey, fans, be sure and enter the Toyota You Pick'em contest. Just go online at jpsports.com and click on the Toyota banner. Pick the winner of each week's game and automatically register to win an all expense paid trip for two for the college football game of your choice. The Toyota You Pick'em contest. 40 yard kick by Cole Chasen is down on a fair catch at the 12 yard line. And now South Carolina is starting to take over things defensively. Yeah, defensively. Defensively. Their offense has got to move some sticks and try to get it to, to manifest a big play. Savelle Newton is back at quarterback. And he'll take it on a quarterback draw. Gets some nice yardage, gets away from one tackle, and gets a first down. Moving out of bounds by Travis Pugh at the 28 27 yard line. Yeah, that's a nice gain on the play. Very nice, considering they, they don't throw the ball with it that well. So if he drops back, I mean, you could, sooner or later, people are just going to eyeball him and force him to throw. That time he took advantage of him, made a good throw, and had some help by his friends in the secondary. Pretty good blocks. 13 yard gain, pushes the ball out to the 26. Newholt starting to see his team come to life offensively here. His defense has held Clemson. Last three possessions, two punts and an interception. Another quarterback draw. Here comes Newton. And this play is working a little bit better than it did in the first quarter. Tremaine Billy in on the tackle, but it's another gain of about five yards. Eventually, what will happen is that John Lovett, the defensive coordinator for the Tigers, and he'll blitz him right up the gut, and then they'll have a chance to throw versus man coverage. And that's what you look for. But you got to be able to hit it. Second down five. Handoff now goes to Donji Gray, and there's nothing there. So if it isn't 13 running the football, it doesn't seem to be successful this afternoon. Fountain is at the point of attack along with Eric Coleman. Now let's have Clemson again. They, they're going to converge right in the middle of that field. Now the Tigers want a timeout with a minute and one left to go here. They have three or had three remaining, and they'll call timeout with the prospect of possibly getting the football back in good field position. Lou Holtz gathers the team. I think Doc hit it well in the outset. And you wondered what Lou would say after the controversy ensued about his coaching future. And I think he's probably already said it yeah. with all of the controversy, probably was part of the motivation. Let's go to the sidelines. A man will take over at halftime. Michael
at Hogwarts. Yeah, Steve, just a couple of minutes away, and uh, we'll, of course, be talking to both coaches here, Tommy Bowden and Lou Holtz, about what they want to do in the second half. And we'll have some highlights from the, another ACC game that uh, kicked off at noon today, that Duke Carolina game. North Carolina needing the win to get bowl eligible with highlights of that. And, of course, talk about the first half here coming up at half. Well, that's a motivation for Tommy Bowden's team right now. They need to win today to get bowl eligible. The Tigers trying to get to another ball game. Of course, uh, Tommy trying to manage expectations. There were a lot of expectations coming into the season. Clemson ranked as high as 15th nationally preseason poll. But Tommy, when he talked to us in Greensboro at the preseason ACC meetings, didn't have that look of confidence. He knew that what he had lost in the wide receivers and young blood at Hamilton. He knew that he had to replace some good linebackers and good defensive tackles. And he knew it would be a work in progress. Uh, he got a, a feeling right off quick in the double overtime win that he had to pull out on opening day against Wake Forest that this season would not be an easy one. It has been up and down. There have been high points. The win over Wake in double overtime. Certainly the win over uh, NC State and then over Miami. And then there have been low points. Of course, the loss to Georgia Tech and the loss to Duke last week. Third down coming and four for the South Carolina Gamecocks. Savelle Newton on the screen. It is complete and dropping the football is Gonzi Gray, so it is incomplete. For the South Carolina, the Clemson off uh, defense comes out and holds. Leroy Hill making the big stop. Yeah, but Trey Tate also involved in there. Tried to run, run a middle screen. That's the advantage again of diligent film study. Watch the tendencies of your opposition. And then they stay in position so you're not tricked. And Josh Brown has been a busy man today on one punch situation that was blocked. He got a first down. Here comes another one that is almost blocked. And he gets a beauty out. Miller to return. Miller heads up the sidelines and is forced out of bounds. And Horace Lambert makes the tackle, forcing Miller to the sidelines again. Emotions are high. 41 yard punt that time. So Brown's getting better and better in his distance. I love the rivalry, man. It's intense. They're going after it. as long as you keep it legal, then it's fun. Of course, uh, Charlie Whitehurst comes out on the field. Charlie's smooth, man. Doesn't seem to be moved by any of this. Justin Miller. The sidelines. He's a junior, Owensboro, Kentucky. 13 career interceptions. First and 10. Flair pass to Coleman, complete. Coleman up the field and forced out of bounds by Tremaine Tyler. Uh, right at midfield and very close to the first down. And he's got the first down back. That stops the clock with 37 seconds. Clemson on with two timeouts. South Carolina with only one. That moves the chains. Clemson, of course, in their no huddle style. They use a lot of time, though, getting up to the ball. Clock won't start till the ball snap here. Whitehurst back to throw. Has some time. Complete to Coleman. What a play by Taki Muhammad, senior out of Wilmington, North Carolina. We have a flag down on the play, but what a play by Taki Muhammad. This this flag comes in the South Carolina secondary. A chop block against Clemson, the preliminary indication from Doyle Jackson. March it off, and this will back the Tigers up with 30 seconds to play in the half. Run. Here comes the call. I think. Boy, it's going way back. Crack back. By offensive number two. Penalty is 5, 15 yards. Three to spot. Followed by repeating the first down. So that backs them back to the almost their original line of scrimmage, the 34 yard line. A costly penalty take Clemson 15 yards back. And a timeout is called by the Tigers. They will have one timeout remaining. They want to talk this over here with halftime just 30 seconds away. Of 
is uh, this is a momentous day here at Clemson. Groundbreaking uh, for the West End Zone project called the West Zone. The groundbreaking today. Game day facilities in the concourse will be open in 2005 and 2006. They'll add club seats, which are sold out, by the way, recruiting team administrative facilities. And then, of course, one Clemson Museum will open. The West Zone of the end zone about to be refitted, and that is the next phase of football and upgrading facilities here at Clemson. And it was Clemson, Doc, in the late 70s and early 90s that really started us all off with the club seats and the club suites in the ACC. And now we've come full cycle and the Tigers are starting to build out. There are the club seats and they've been in service here for over 20 years. And the ring of honor you see Steve Fuller's name and the legendary coach Frank Howard. Howard's rock is what the Tigers touch as they run down the hill. And today it provoked a confrontation that resulted in an offsetting penalty. There's the, the hat. This series used to be played on Thursday. They called it Big Thursday. And for the first 57 games were played at Columbia as part of State Fair Week. And Big Thursday ended in 1960. They started alternating the sites. They played 95 consecutive years. First and 10, first and 25 now for Clemson. Whitehurst facing pressure, scrambling in reverse. He's outside the pocket. He can let it go. And he does. There is a push on the play. The main title on chance he's stuck you, but there's no call. The ball has to be catching. The key is that they got to feel like the receiver could actually catch the ball. Exactly. And the uncatchable ball because all Whitehurst was doing, <laughs> he was scrambling for he his take life. A for he took a shot at it. That's smart. Smart quarterback. You give your guy a chance, maybe you get a call. Cost him 10 seconds on the clock. There's 20 seconds left in the quarter and a half. If you're Gamecock fan, you got to be happy. But once again, they had a black helmet, you know, on his shoulder pads. They've been able to get after him. His mentor's done a job in convincing his kids the importance of pressure. And they've gotten they've gotten a sack today. Rick, of course, one of several guys who's been a head coach on this team. This is a handoff to Merriweather, and it's not going very far. It looks like Clemson has decided that the best get this thing into the. Locker room at halftime and see what happens. Jermaine Harris in on the tackle. We've got a Clemson player down. And let's see who that is going to be. As, uh, big time is stopped with six seconds. It's a big uh, yeah, it is. That's Cedric Johnson. That's a fifth year senior from Barwick, Georgia, who is the left guard. Uh, they've already lost Tommy, or Tommy Sharp is not playing now. They've got uh, Dustin Fry as their center. Now Sharp is back on the field. Big dog had a real nice block on that opening drive, opening score for the Tigers. It's about 335, 340. And as we watched, uh, I mean he can he can engulf you. <laughs> I love that term. Engulf you. I mean, look, I mean we I hope he's up. Oh, all right. I like watching him work. And they're gonna treat him rather gingerly here as they get him up to the field. Mike Hawkwood coming up at halftime. Having his knee, watch this. Right, right in the middle, right there. Oh, yeah. Right there. He's hurt on the way down. Yeah, going down. That would be a big loss. Yeah, hate that, man. Hate it to see any kid of these young men, especially on that last turn in your career, you want to go out. Walk out. You want to walk off the field. You want to have a bold experience and say thank you to all the teachers, and counsel, you know, the people who've been counseling you and supporting you for all those years. He's going to go off under his own power, but limping on that right knee. And Cedric Johnson exits the field of battle here with six seconds left to go. Clemson was trying to run out the clock and get to the locker room, so they'll be forced to run another play here. It's been an interesting first half. The Tigers scored twice in the first quarter, once on the game's third play. And now the clock is allowed to run out. Good move by the officials. They allow the clock to run out. Teams retire to the locker room after an emotional first half. Get down to football in the second half as Lou Holtz and the Gamecocks run off the field. Tommy Bowden and his team do the same. The Tigers with two Reggie Merriweather touchdowns, leading South Carolina 14 to 7. Mike Hogwood is standing by with Tommy Bowden.
Tommy really had the momentum early, and now it seems that South Carolina's defense has, has really gotten better as this game has gone on. Yeah, you know, we haven't been out there very long, made a couple mistakes on offense that Water. couldn't continue drives. But again, uh, it'll be an interesting second half. What do you have to do in the second half to, to stay on top here? Well, if I don't score, we win. <laughs> so I'll go, go. I'll go for no score. But <laughs> just talking about as elementary as we can get. What, you, what is that? What you can take? Well, 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 oh yeah, oh yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. And then we you know we've got to do some things offensively. Of course, obviously we like to get more points. So we got to continue to do what we're doing. We're moving the football. And then we gave up one big play on defense. All right. Tommy Bowden headed to the locker room and his team out in front by a touchdown here in this big rival battle, 14 to seven. It's the Tigers over the Gamecocks. ACC football is brought to you by Geico, by Toyota, by Napa Auto Care Center, by Sonic Drive-In, and by Sitco. Football is being brought to you by Cooper Tires, by Bell South, by Sitco, by GMC, by BB&T, and by Advance Auto Parts. 14 to 7 the score, and uh, just moments ago. As Clemson leads the South Carolina Gamecocks by seven. Let's go to the sidelines where Mike Hogwood a moment ago had a chance to talk with South Carolina football coach Lou Holtz. Yeah, he was really upbeat about his team here in the second half. He says he felt that they dodged some big bullets in the first half and that the story now is field position. What his team needs with Newton at quarterback, and that's who he's going with the whole way here in the second half, he needs field position. He says that's a big key. He feels real good about the attitude of the team. He says he feels they're ready to come back and take charge of this game. His best field position to start a drive in the first half was his own 24 yard line. They started drives at their own foot line. And uh, you're right. Feels he did dodge the bullet. It's, and his defense seemingly has risen to the task. Let's see of his offense. I thought his choice of quarterback was interesting because I was talking to Todd Ellis, who was the former South Carolina quarterback now there broadcasting. He thought that we might see Mike Rapp in the second half at some point in time. But he didn't think he was surprised to see Dondrell Pinkins in the ball game. Here comes the kick. And this one will sail out of the end of the zone and out of bounds. And that'll be Justin Miller over there covering. And it'll be first and ten Clemson out of their own 20 yard line, which is their worst furrow position of the day. <laughs> Look at their possessions this afternoon. Of course, they recovered a fumble off the opening kickoff, scored two of the first three times, but were intercepted and had two punts. Followed by a time running out in reverse as the half ended. Good news to see big number 65, Cedric Johnson, who uh, sustained an injury in the third facility when this pass. He's back out on the field. In the offensive situation, there he is. The man was down with a knee injury, Doyle Jackson now. That was a good ball. Well, that's something Lou doesn't want to see his team do, and that is give Clemson a little extra field position. He moves them out to first and five. That was Marquis Hall, true freshman, out of Wingate, North Carolina, in on the penalty. The first and five, Charlie Whitehurst and company. Joseph Kelly goes in motion. Merriweather is behind him and gets the call. And Merriweather, big hole. It has to be hauled down by Co Simpson and Jamasia Jackson, the two safeties, before he is tackled at the 37 yard line. Way too, it's just way too easy. They do it up front. Good little block, see, right, right at the corner, right in there. That's that lane is created. Sharp bending again, getting the job done. You know what Merriweather can do when he squares those shoulders up. First and ten, Clemson. South Carolina showing blitz. Packers who came out of the no huddle to change the call. Rick Minner will bring the corners up a little bit. He's got a blitz on. Merriweather barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. Ricardo Hurley, George Dawes, 
make the stop. Gaz, an all SEC candidate with 14 career sacks. A senior out of Conway, South Carolina. And there is Marcus Lawrence, a senior out of Aiken. 46 has been active. He's, he's been all over the place. They need Gaz to, to dominate. They really need a great performance out of that line. And they had a great performance early on in terms of pressure on the quarterback. Second down now coming. Tigers step up to the line. Let's see what the game cops are lined up in. Charlie's read his keys. And the pass is incomplete. Intended for Aries Curry. Short of the first down at the 46 yard line. He looks uncomfortable. Curry, Curry looks like he's in pain. Curry had a wide open pass that he dropped on a flea flicker. This didn't look hand related. I mean, that, that, that body language does yeah. not seem to be hand related. Yeah. Had that, and Mike Hogwood told us about a possible thumb injury. But third down coming for the Tigers now. Clemson two out of six on third down. Whitehurst has Merriweather in for protection. Good pressure by South Carolina. Pass complete. Chancey Stuffy for the first down at the South Carolina 49. Demacia Jackson drops him, but not before he picked up a 12 yard gain and moves the sticks. Good pass protection. The offensive line does what they're supposed to do. Create a throwing lane. Good throwing catch. The pressure didn't get there in time. And if you give Whitehurst that kind of time, he's usually going to put the ball right over the numbers. Charlie Whitehurst, the junior from Duluth, Georgia, hands off to Merriweather. He's had an excellent day, but South Carolina Making a statement there, George Gods and Mo Thompson, the two defensive ends, close in and say, you don't see enough of that play. Yeah, and that, that gives them a chance to win. Because if Clemson can run the football, you're in a world of trouble. Because you know eventually Michael Kane will call that play action bomb, and then you're in real trouble. Look, look at it, Mo Thompson there. Thompson, who Holtz told us in our teleconference on Thursday. Could be an All American at tight end and defensively. Yeah, he I mean, really gave him the highest praise I've heard from a coach in a long while. And off Merriweather. Merriweather breaking tackles and he's close to another first down. Jamacia Jackson has to pull him down. But Reggie Merriweather has already scored twice today, starting to pile up some yards. 12 carries, 57 yards, two touchdowns, and this is close enough for a measurement. You average close to 200 yards on the ground a game. Now you're accustomed to running large volume in the second half. Close enough for the measurement. He's got it. Tigers moving the football in game top territory now. Tommy Bowden saying, We're moving the football. Just uh, some unfortunate opportunities from town to time. Those are our all tell. Players to watch, and here's another look at how the balloting is going. We picked Demetrius Summers and Charlie Whitehurst. Which one will have the most impact? Well, the callers say it'll be Demetrius Summers. Well, neither one has really had a much that much impact on the game at this point in time. Neither scored a touchdown. Remember, ACC fans, visit texttowinmvp.com and see how you can enter for a chance to win a million dollars simply by using your Altel wireless phone. Clemson using Reggie Merriweather to their advantage. And on first down, he butts tackles for eight yards. Rodriguez Wilson brings him down for the stop. We know what they're facing at home. Certainly wouldn't yards, but look at the offensive line play. Coming off, good surge, determined back. Merriweather, 14 carries, 73 yards. He's shaken up as he goes to the sideline, but it's not like they're bereft at that position. Dwayne Coleman has run well today. Second down and one. Eighth play of this drive. And off Coleman and caught from behind by Jamesia Jackson. He's not going to get the first down. Not much. Not going to get it. Good coverage by South Carolina. This Gamecock defense, 28th in the NCAA. They are fifth in the SEC in scoring defense. Clemson leads this series with 61 wins in the 102 games they played. There are four games that ended in a tie, but the team with the best record since 1980 has won this matchup. There's the Tigers' record at home. Coleman again looking for the first down. He may be close to it. 
needed the 30. He's got it at the 29. Rodriguez Wilson and Mo Thompson. See Coleman, he just runs like he's a lot bigger than 200 pounds. Really does. 5'10, 200 pounds out of Naples, Florida. And a good football player, really competitive young man. Verify the point. The team with a better record in this series, Doc, since 1981, has a 17 2 record. South Carolina came in here at 6 and 4, Clemson at 5 and 5. Whitehurst back to throw. And rolls right into the grip of Mo Thompson. Second sack of the day for the Gamecocks, and Thompson bulldozed Whitehurst for a loss on the play of close to 10, maybe 11 yards. I call that a holiday sack. Oh, really? Yes, indeed. <laughs> you kind of stumbled into that one. Yeah. And yeah, you're watching the right side. Here he is right there, 91. He's going to come in and watch right there. He gets into it, and I think he will. Oh! You there? <laughs> Charlie said, "Let me roll this way, get away from this pressure." Because <laughs> Johnson's so big, I don't think you could see around him. Charlie wasn't able to step up in the pocket. If he stepped up, he would have avoided it. Thompson from Bruce Creek, South Carolina. Here's Whitehurst with the throw. It is complete. Stucky has been his most valuable receiver of the day. This will not be for first down, but it'll be to the 26-yard line. A gain of 13. Jamacia Jackson on the tackle. Let's go to the sidelines for an injury update from Mike Hopwood. And Clemson's going to have to go without Nathan Bennett. He came out a couple of plays ago. He's been taken to the locker room. He's got a uh, bad ankle. They're going to check on it right now, but he's out for now. That's their right guard. So Roman Fry is next on the list. And he'll come in. It's third down now for the Tigers. Third and seven. Key third down on this drive. Try to offset the damage of the sack. Whitehurst pass complete to Coleman. Lost his shoe and gets down to about the 14, but he gained something much more valuable, and that's a first down. Jermaine Harris, Jamesia Jackson come up with a play. Shoeless Dwayne Coleman to the sideline. He's still rumbling. And that's the key. Boy, when you can put the ball in Whitehurst and put it in his hands and let him control it. Good hit. Good tackle by Jackson, who's been showing me a real physical side. But Coleman wouldn't be denied. Joseph Kelly's the fullback. The tailback now is Reggie Merriweather on first and ten from the South Carolina 16. An important drive for the game comes. Or for the Tigers. Here comes Merriweather. And hit off the right side and look at him break tackles to the 10. Over there, George Dawes, but Marcus Lawrence finally downs him. They'll call him down at the 11 yard line. Upshire got him in a the line of scrimmage 57. Groundhog, he puts a, puts a pad on him. See there, the average back goes down. He doesn't average about number 37. No, not at all. You know what I mean? He's closing in. He's 23 yards from the century mark. Second down now. And six to go. This is Clemson's standard style. They'll come up to the line. They'll make you think that they're ready to snap. Then he looks to the sidelines. Dave O'Sweeney gets the call from the box. They look at South Carolina's alignment and then they pick a play. Here's Ryan Rubber, and that play is a touchdown. From 12 yards out for the third time today, Reggie Merriweather takes it in. The forecast has been for him this afternoon. Twice in the first quarter, once here in the third. And the Tigers push their lead to 13. That's the way you flex your muscles. Do it on the ground. Get everybody involved in it. Jad Dean getting up for the point after. Very well there now with 16 carries, three touchdowns, 89 yards in the afternoon. And we got flags everywhere. We'll stop this point after. We've got to go now, Mike Hogwood. We've got to start picking up. The yardage is there for us to get, and if you just start to get them to take advantage of it. Is bend but not break defense. Broke a little right there on that second down play. That was outside by the defense. That is fine. Still trying for the point. So they'll try once more for the point. Jad Dean out of the hold of Cole Chasen. To christen a 14 play march to start the third quarter for the Clemson Tigers. An impressive one. 
led downfield by runs by Reggie Merriweather and a key pass to Chancey Stuckey that got them near midfield. And Dean for the kick and it is no good. Whoa, it was wrong right for the hole. And Dean misses. That may come back to caught the Tigers as the afternoon moves along. But they score again on a touchdown run by Reggie Merriweather. For the third time this afternoon, Merriweather carries a mail 12 yards out. It's Clemson 20, South Carolina 7. Clemson pushes their lead to 20 to 7. They miss the extra point. That's the first miss of Jad Dean's career. He was 17 of 17 prior. Comes the kickoff and Matthew Thomas goes back about five yards deep. He will not bring it out. The Tigers used up almost half the quarter to move 80 yards downfield on that drive. Good combination, run and the pass. Look at the hats. The hat placement there is fine. Cedric Johnson, Barry Richardson, left side of that Clemson Tiger line, of course. And Sludgehammer, Steve Jackson, the fullback, all wings. Dominant at the point of attack. Merriweather seven carries on the drive, 48 yards, and a 13-yard pass hook up to Chancey Stuckey at midfield from Charlie Whitehurst pushed the drive along. First and ten. Savell Newton back at the helm, and after a long rest, he gets hit right across the face by Tremaine Billard, and he's set for a loss of maybe a yard at the 19-yard line. They rolled left. I mean, they took some action away from the right side, where they were predominantly right-handed in the first half. I'll give them some credit for at least mixing things up. Second down and 11. Williamson comes out split to the right side of the field. In the slot is Corey Boyd. Actually, three wideouts now to that side, and Noah Whiteside is there with it. They'll bring Boyd back the other way. Play fake. Blitz is on. The linebackers break out. Leroy Hill and Tremaine Billy wait for Savelle Newton, and they don't even let him complete the play action. Well, they had a blitz come onside, so you see it. It's right in your face. A little surprised he wasn't able to at least throw that one, you know, over here to the tuba player. He didn't have a chance. He didn't even have a chance to bring the ball up to his elbow. Uh, loss of 10. Great, great uh, pressure, to say the very least, by the Tigers. We have this crowd here, Death Valley now, back on his feet. Third and 21. Savell Newton at his own eight. Play action, nobody bought it. Pass down center of the field to Matthew Thomas. Leroy Hill, Ty Hill covering on the play. Both touch the football, and it'll be fourth down. And they get so close. You have one receiver, one primary going against two guys and, a, and two, and look like a zone as well. And yet, get a shot at it. Yeah. Justin Miller back in punt formation. It's going to be Josh Brown back there to kick Brown. It be, remains to be seen whether Brown saved this game for South Carolina on that block punt that he recovered for a first down. He steps away from the rush, kicks it out of there, and it is going to. Roll dead and out of bounds at the 44 yard line. So it'll be about a 34 yard punt by Josh Brown. Timeout on the field. Clemson gets it back on the Gamecock side of the 50, up 20 to 7. 20 to 7 our score. Clemson leading South Carolina the 102nd renewal of this great rivalry. Played for the first 57 years at Columbia on Big Thursday as part of State Fair Week. Since 1960, they've alternated. Clemson Tigers have themselves a lead. Charlie Whitehurst out in the flats. It is complete. And he rewards Stephen Jackson for an all round fine game with a pass reception, his first of the season at the 36 yard line. Ricardo Hurley. Throws him out of bounds. Threw big Steve a bone, huh? Yes, they did. Let's go to the sidelines of Mike Hogwood. Well, guys, as you can imagine, in a game like this, there have been a lot of words exchanged between players on both sides. The officials have just gone to both coaches' staff and said, "That's enough. No more talking on the field, or we're going to start throwing yellow flags." I think this crew has shown great restraint. Oh, I, I, yeah, I said that earlier, and I'm yes, not, you did. very impressed. 
And now they've stepped up and said, let's play football in the second half. Dwayne Coleman bounces off tackles. He's close to a first down. Marcus Lawrence going to be in there for the stop. I think it's going to be short by about a yard. He's at the 35 yard line, needs the 34. The Cox are battling on that defensive line. They, they get penetration, but they can't stop them. You know, and that's, that eventually wears on you. Well, field position wears on you too when you're always on your end of the field. Coming off the field now is Rodriguez Wilson, and that's pretty much where they have. Uh, Clemson has started three drives, four drives in South Carolina territory this afternoon. Third down and one. Merriweather, the lone setback. And he'll take it through for the first down. He waited for the debris to cross and then got across the 30 yard line down to the 27. Same old story. They don't lock up. The Gamecocks are there. Our Aaron scoreboard, North Carolina now leading Duke in the third. They're having a great one for the victory bell in Durham. Miami flexing its muscles at the Orange Bowl against Wake Forest. And this is a 10 yard pass from Darian Durant to Jaworski Pollock, and that puts the Tar Heels on top on a cloudy day in Durham. Now they're up 26 17. Darian Durant having a great season, his senior season in Chapel Hill. A heck of a career. And off goes straight ahead and is flattened out to the side. Not much gain there on first down. South Carolina reads that pretty well. Mo Thompson in on the tackle on the carry by Joseph Kelly. And let's face it, South Carolina's offense is not equipped for comeback capabilities. No, not with not. this personnel. So they, it's a, you know, they got home to a field goal. You got to get a force a turnover. You got to try to do something to turn the tide. Oh, the fact that South Carolina has only been in Clemson territory once this afternoon, and that was on the touchdown. Right. That says a lot. That is. I mean, they just have been on their side of the field way too much. Second down and 10. At the 28. Blitz is on. Whitehurst reads it. Has his receiver Curry complete for the first down. And he's driven out by Tremaine Tyler at the 13 yard line. Gain on the play of 15, and Clemson moves the sticks. Now, Curry, he, he's a playmaker. He had a problem with the thumb. See, if you don't put pressure on it, Whitehurst, he'll get to you. And then Curry knows what to do with the football once he gets it. Clemson with eight first downs this half. Time of possession, they've had all of it except for three plays in the second half so far. First and ten at the 13. Whitehurst brings them up. South Carolina knows the rhythm of this no huddle offense because of their defensive coordinator Rick Mitter and his experience running it at Cincinnati. Play action, pressure is on, and Whitehurst has to throw it away. Did it for his tight end that time. That was Ben Hall. Thomas Coleman put the pressure on. Actually, that's Stanley Dowd. That pressure's key. When South Carolina gets that pressure, Good things happen to the game guy. Second down coming. This looks like uh, feels to me like fade route time. You think? For the Tigers. This is where they throw it. Well, they're, not, they're not scared at all. Bayham is down in that area on one side of the field. The top side of the field is Curry. Maybe the slot receiver is the guy you should be scared of. And now timeout called by Clemson. Timeout with 3.59 left to go here in the third quarter. The Tigers lead the Gamecocks 20 to 7. Back after this word from your local station. Tigers threatening in the red zone once again inside the 15 at the 13 yard line. They are second down and a handoff. Goes once again to Reggie Merriweather, who scored already three times today. Clemson, 20 to 7. Rodriguez Wilson comes back into the game, and he makes the tackle. Whitehurst surveys the sideline. Game cops yards by half. They've only had the all three plays in the second half. A total of one minute and 21 seconds. Clemson's dominated the time of possession and the yardage on the field. Well, when you can, when you're, you know, they're not one dimensional. When you can run it, toss it. You have a lot of advantages when a quarterback like number six is on your side. We have a 
triplet formation on the right. There's a blitz on the pass complete. And guess what? It's Chancey Stuckey down at the five yard line. He does not get the first down. It'll bring up fourth down and a decision for Tommy Bowden. Probably going to bring Whitehurst off the field and send a kicking unit in. Jermaine Tyler makes the tackle. Ferocious hit, Steve. At the end of this, free runner. That's Rydell right in your grill. Whitehurst has had a lot of people right up in his shoulder pads today. This is, uh, you know, that's not by design. Well, you know, you say, is it by design? Well, they might let a free runner come to the quarterback so he can see it and get rid of it. He's still smooth as silk at that time. That pop. Morris Lambert on the stop. Now, Jad Dean, who's trying to shake off a missed point extra point after. It's a 21 yard attempt here, and it is good. So the Tigers tack on three more. That offsets the miss of the extra point, plus two for good measure. 234 left to go here in the third. Well, in the 1977 matchup between these two teams, Clemson jumped out to a 24 0 lead. There's Ken Calicut with a big, long 52 yard run. The South Carolina would come all the way back, took the lead with just under two minutes to go. Well, enter Jerry Butler. He and Steve Fuller connect on a 20 yard touchdown pass with 49 seconds remaining. The backwards diving effort will go ever, forever down in Clemson history as the catch. It gave the Tigers a four point lead. Watch it again as Butler lays out on his back. The victory clenches an invitation to the Gator Bowl. Clemson's first bowl bid in 18 years and starts them on what has still continued to be an incredible bowl run. But to get bowl eligible. This score has to stand up for the Tigers because they are one win shy of that elusive sixth win. They score on a nine play drive. They go 40 yards after excellent field position at the South Carolina 44. And Jad Dean gets the 21 yard field goal. That's where we stand. South Carolina about to get the football for the fourth play of this third quarter. Matt Thomas, Matthew Thomas at the four. Surveys the wedge, Dunham slows him down. And the tackle is made by Tremaine Billy. No, that's going to be. That is Kyle Brown. Kyle Browning on the tackle, but David Dunham slowed him down. David's played great on special teams this afternoon. There's Brown. Well, you know why? When you get your backup middle linebacker. Who can run well enough to get on those teams, but he, he's going to be something. He's a junior and he wants to be on the field and contribute, and that he's done. New quarterback for the Gamecocks. He is senior Mike Raff from San Diego, California. He drove the Gamecocks to a win over Kentucky with Dondrell Pinkins injured. He's back and in command. He has the first pass of the day, and it is incomplete, intended for Noah Whiteside. Noah's got to catch it. The ball, you know. Got to go get it. Rab, because this young man, Rath, gives them an opportunity now. Because they were playing without without real benefit of the forward pass. Yes, they were. They you, know, were. you can only camouflage that so long against a team as good as Clemson. You, know, again, you need big plays. You need a guy that can orchestrate it. Maybe this is a precursor to the future of the Gamecock, especially if the ball coach is going to be down there. Now, South Carolina has scheduled an announcement about their football program on Monday. Expected at that time, Lou Holtz will announce his retirement, and on Tuesday, they will announce that Steve Spurrier has taken his place. That's the report in the Columbia, South Carolina newspaper, The State. Lou did not give an indication in our teleconference of what uh, his decision would be, but no illegal substitution file. Well, but he did reportedly tell his team after practice Thursday that this was it. This go to the sidelines on Mike Hopkins. Dondrell Pickens did play in the first half, but I've been told he is not available in the second half. He re-injured himself when he in those few plays he was in in the first half for South Carolina. Todd Ellis said that Mike Rath got a lot of snaps this week, and he's up and it's his game right now. His pass complete on second down, and it is complete to Troy Williamson. 
South Carolina landed just two field goals in the first 58 and a half minutes against Kentucky just two weeks ago. But fourth string Gamecock quarterback Mike Brad became the hero. He hit Troy Williamson for a 19 yard touchdown and a 12 7 win in the final minutes at Kentucky. So Rath has been known to get it done. He's 11 for 15, 73 percent of his passes, two of them for touchdowns, and he powered South Carolina to a key come from behind win on a game that they were favored at Lexington. Well, he's got quite a challenge on his shoulders right now. Third down and four. He's trailing 20 to 23 7. Pass almost picked off by Gaines. No, and the Niners. Corey Groover gets a deflected pass from the hand of Gaines Adams. And the Tigers come up with a big interception. Pick number seven. Playing like the athlete on this. Adams had pressure. We were inside. Now watch number seven. First of all, initial pressure. Then you see the tip. Then there's the hand eye coordination. Prices. Whiteside couldn't come up with it. That put Gruber in position. Look at it again. Now, Whiteside had a shot. He bounced up and then again Gruber. He's done nothing but make plays for the Clemson Tigers. Gruber. Junior from Johnsonville, South Carolina, almost scored a touchdown on that block punt, but his failure to come up with it allowed Josh Brown to come up. Here comes Dwayne Coleman on first and ten. And Prince and offense gets out there quickly. The defense says this one isn't over. Ricardo Hurley and Co Simpson make the tackle. And the Gamecocks are suddenly defending their own turf again. Second turnover of the day. For South Carolina. The first came on the opening kickoff. Second down and 10. Ball on the South Carolina 12. Charlie Whitehurst comes up to the line. Here comes the handoff. It's a Merriweather. Merriweather finding the hole off the right side gets inside the 10. Gets all the way down to the seven yard line. Preston Thorne, fifth year senior from Somerville, South Carolina, making the stop. Somerville, home for a great football, high school football program led by John McKissick. It's turned out many great football players. Right now. Merriweather now crosses the century mark in yardage. His 20th carry, 101 yards. He has three touchdowns. Third down and five. The yard line to get is the two. Whitehurst pressured, fires, incomplete. Jermaine Tyler had a better shot at it, and again, Oris Lambert gets his second shot at Charlie Whitehurst. It's all the best. Pressure. I mean, whenever you say pressure, Charlie's helmet is uh, wobbling on his on his head, then you see what good in, up and under move. Just ate Barry Richardson alive. Lambert again has shown us man he's a motor guy plays fast and that time he had great technique on the move and it brought about again that's four points they keep up the scoreboard should Clemson make this that's right 24 yard field goal attempt first one of the day was 21 by Jad Dean he has missed the point after he's working from the right hashman it is up <laughs> it is good it wasn't a thing of beauty but it goes for three and the Tigers lengthen their lead now to 19. 26 to 7. Could be 30. It could. I mean, that's the difference. Yep. The difference in this ball game is that Clemson's you know, inability to just end this and put it away. And the game clock's still hanging around, but their time is going against them now. Big Ben is going to squeeze them out of this if they don't get seven on the board. ASAP. 40 seconds to play in this third quarter. The scoring drive after the interception. Four plays. Five yards in a minute 30 to execute Jad Dean's second field goal of the afternoon. And it is the second turnover for South Carolina and the tenth point off turnovers for the Clemson Tigers this afternoon. The Tigers, of course, have one of the worst turnover ratios in the ACC. They turn that around on today somewhat. 16 turnovers to nine takeaways. A fun team to watch. Yeah. You imagine having Clemson with your bowl. Oh, somebody's yeah. going to kick, 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 steal. No, somebody's going to get him if they can hang on for the next 15 minutes and 40 seconds. It could be the beat. It could be the uh, several opportunities. The game, uh, champ sports ball, the Continental Fire Ball in Charlotte, the NPC Computer Ball out in Boise, Idaho. They're better than the record. 
Yeah, you know, I just think that, and especially this time of the year, you get a better bargain than their record in, in, in games. But and I think what the fans are thinking is that well, we're better than our record indicates, but we're not as good as the preseason expectations. Bingo. Very well said. Very well said. But it's uh, they travel very well, and they have all the intangibles, you know, for a uh, a good, nice bowl opportunity. Tommy Bowden still trying to win over the Clemson faithful. They don't have his name up on the Ring of Honor yet. <laughs> Probably be a while. Touchback, yeah, Matthew Thomas. But I think they're taking strides. Yeah, they're moving in the right direction. So South Carolina will get the football at the 20-yard line. There's Tommy. It's been a tough week for him. He's had to answer a lot of questions about uh, the loss to Duke after such a big win in overtime against Miami. And then, of course, he's had to view from a side this what's going on in Columbia with the Lou Holtz, Steve Spurrier story. Did I miss something? Did Tommy play last week? Is there? No, his players did. Yeah, right. That's my point. <laughs> people need to get into that. These coaches don't play. You know, the kids put the responsibility on the kids to make plays and carry out their assignments. Savell so Newton's back under center. Play action out on the flats. He's got to get something going here now. He's got Williamson out there, and a great play by Ty Hill to pick up the ball. Ty Hill's made a couple of them. Both on Troy Williamson, and he's had a fine day. Well, I'll tell you what, this kid, there is, we, we've watched a number of his games this year. He has what they call closer speed, but the ball is late. See, there's no way to, to I can't make this up. The ball is late, and if you get it there earlier, you have a touchdown. Now, there's some contact. All good corners make a little contact. But if they could get, if their timing was improved, they'd have 14 points on those two plays. Hill with his third pass breakup of the day. Second down and 10. Savelle Newton changing things around here at his own 20 yard line. Down 26 7. End around. White side. Clemson there to meet it. That is Waters. Anthony Waters, the sophomore from Lakeview, South Carolina, came into the game with 61 tackles. They're dialed in, and they're flat out dialed into this offense. They have it down. They're playing with great enthusiasm. They've got the score fate that favors them considerably. And if you're, if you're a Tiger fan, you're feeling pretty good right now about your afternoon. Third quarter is about to end. Third and 12 coming up. Third and 18, actually, for the Gamecocks. It's been all Clemson here in the second half. Reggie Merriweather with three touchdowns, two Jaggeen field goals, and Clemson's up 26-7 after three. Welcome back as we're getting ready to start the fourth quarter. And here we are up in the press box at uh, Death Valley. It's been Clemson all afternoon, especially they have all in the third quarter. They really have been. What the Gamecocks have to do is get a big play. They've tried unsuccessfully now twice with that post route. I throw it every play until I get it because the rest of their offense right now is not happening at all. Key drive, of course, Reggie Miller, the other capping a huge drive that lasted half the quarter. They make it 20 to 7. Two field goals since it made it 23 7. There's a pass, connect, and then disconnect. Savelle Newton trying to lay out Troy Williamson. And a frustration showing on his face now as the punting unit comes back home. Yeah, it's, it's, it's how you catch the football. Fundamentally, he laid out, you got to go get it. When I mean, your team is struggling, you go out there, you got to grab, you know, get your hands on some kind of way, you got to suck that thing in. You can't have this many near miss opportunities. You fight your guts out, you need a playmaker. Josh Brown ready for his eighth punt of the afternoon. Justin Miller ready to bring it back. Almost blocked again. This time he stayed right in there. Fair catch called for by Miller at midfield, but again, look where Clemson is starting their drive this time at the midfield strike. 38 yard punt. If you look at our third quarter stats, they'll be dominated by the Clemson Tigers. Every. Very you, you want to look at. Yep. But what it does tell us is that really how courageous the game cops have been defensively. Well, it's been a short, a short field for the well, Look, look how long they've had to stay on the field in the third quarter. Well, I'll give you that, boy. They, they're courageous, play with a lot of heart. But their offense right now needs a lot to be desired. Back to throw. Whitehurst to the flats. And Reggie Merriweather put it too small for that pass. Good idea, though, by Whitehurst. I mean, 
Guy has a lot of dude. Little touch pass. He got the cannon. He can put it where he wants to. Almost like a pool shark. You know, he has a lot of shots in his repertoire. Yeah, that look from the sidelines. Hey, let me un unwork this. But if I'm very well, I'm a little concerned. The ball, I guess, look back and they come down. <laughs> the way the game caught it, they're flying out, out of that secondary, hitting people. 26 7 Clemson in the lead 14 41 in this 102nd renewal of this fourth oldest rivalry in Division 1A football. Here comes the handoff to Merriweather. He's in South Carolina territory again at the 49, making the 48 yard line. And Morris Lambert comes in for the stop along with the main title. You start to look ahead here with 14 27 and talk about the tough spots on this South Carolina offense. What lies ahead for the folks of Cock Nation now as they uh, line up for what could be announcement on Tuesday? Well, if the ball coach, you know, is uh, if his visor, you know, is, is on campus, they get prepared because uh, they're going to bring some people in. Here's Whitehurst pass complete. The chance he stuck it down at the 25-yard line. Covering on the plane, Jamaica Jackson, also Taki Muhammad. But it's a key first down for the Tigers who strike even deeper into game time plan. It's plain and simple, folks. If you don't put a helmet under Charlie's chin, then he's going to eat you alive. It's just that simple. And he's got people to do it. And, it, you know, the ball coach, Steve Spurrier, he's going to attract people to do that on a regular basis because he's a magnet to talented kids. Kids going to want to come in and play his, his style of football, which is Put a foot on your throat and twist. Right. The ball coach is the most aggressive throwing coach I've ever seen. In motion goes Kelly. Handoff goes Merriweather. And putting him down hard is George Gauss. Nice tackle by Gauss at the 24 yard line. A gain of about two. That's interesting. The old ball coach is in Durham today. They're celebrating the uh, ACC championship of 1981, uh, 1989, won by the B-Day. Yeah. That's a. Uh, Claxton, uh, what was the was here with that guy? Claxton Hines. Claxton Hines, yeah, one thing about 90 yards on, on the play. Now, Spurry is a good, good people, and uh, he'll get the job done. I, I guarantee you that. It, a lot of it, you know, you got to get your staff together, and you have to get kids. If he can pull the kids, then uh, look out. Well, gotta, here is Whitehurst with the throw. It is complete to Bayham, and He's working inside the 20 now, and it's down to the 18. They get about six yards of the eight they need for a first down. To complete the thought, you also have to give credit to Lou Holtz. He has put the program on solid foot. Lou's a Hall of Fame. Lou's a Hall of Fame coach. And these kids now, they've been touched. They've been anointed by Lou, and, and their lives will never be the same. Because the reason this defense is out here playing hard, their offense, they're not making plays, but they haven't laid down. They play hard. Yeah. And Lou teaches you how to be build building blocks for life. So these kids now, they'll do great things whether or not they play football or seniors to move on because of the influence of this man, Lou Holtz. Third down and about one and a timeout called on the field by the Tigers here to talk this over as they want to put an all-important additional score on the scoreboard to try to put their rivals from Columbia under the carpet for good. Welcome back to Death Valley. Key third down and two play. Third and one, actually. Clemson five of seven on third downs this half. Their efficiency for the game, seven of 13. Make it eight for 14. Now, Reggie Merriweather, who's been the featured scorer and back of the day, gets it down to the 10 yard line. Cole Simpson on the tackle, and Clemson's knocking on the door and knocking hard. Merriweather is, a, for a sophomore, quite impressive. Impressive that he's not a dancing prancer. He's an attack artist. I mean, he gets right in the hole and challenges you. I mean, it, that's that's rare. We got a lot of guys who dance and look for holes and wait for holes. He creates holes. 23 carries, 113 yards for the sophomore from North Augusta, South Carolina. First and ten from the ten. Here comes Merriweather again, and he breaks away from Marquis Hall. Ricardo Hurley holds him down at the six yard line. Came out. Pure <laughs> came out. I mean, he's got a lot in him because you cannot challenge his will. You can't break his spirit. He had, you know, no, holds on to the football, runs like a madman. Coming up on second and goal, Clemson cannot get another first down. 
and they'd like to get more than three. Seven would pretty much put this one away. The crowd chanting Reggie. Chancy Stucky split wide to the top side in the slot is Curry. Then Hall the tight end on the right. Merriweather behind the block of his right tackle but South Carolina saying no at this point. Mo Thompson at the top of the pile. Ricardo Hurley on there as well. And getting up from the bottom Marcus Lawrence. Jackson in there he, he's trying to ball people. This is what I like about the game cops. I mean yeah they're not winning on the scoreboard but I mean if you if you're on that field right now and Mike Hogwood get a better feel for it than any of us. They're still fighting. You know it's still a struggle. It's not a cakewalk. But they've been out there a long time. A long time, yeah. Well, they're outmatched right now with skill. This offense just has too many weapons. Ninth play of this drive, it started at midfield. Third and goal from the five. Whitehurst looks in to throw. Look for that pass across the middle. Stucky can't get into the end zone. And popped up the football, but they're going to call it down. Marcus Lawrence made the tackle and the strip. Well, they said Chancey Stucky was down at the three. And Clemson will have to settle for three. And that's a big move by the game cops. Yeah. That's gutsy. You know, 26 7, and yet you're in here fighting your guts out, and you've been out there the entire half. Well conditioned and with a great attitude. So we're looking at a 20 yard field goal. Jad Teen has looked at uh, nothing but chip shots here today 21, 24, and now this will be a 20 footer, 20 yarder. 20 foot, that's. <laughs> To burp that one over. Here comes the kick, and it is good. Clemson adds three more. They're up by 22. A three touchdown lead, and then some. 9 16 left to go in this great rivalry between Clemson and South Carolina at Death Valley. Ready to kick it off after the third Jad Dean field goal of the second half. Ten plays, 47 yards, five minutes and 31 seconds to execute. The kick. By Dean goes out of the end zone and South Carolina will not attempt to bring it back. South Carolina in the second half nine plays minus 11 yards. Clemson 34 plays 166 yards. Recently the Atlantic Coast Conference received the Horizon Award for Amateur Sports Organization of the Year for the Atlanta Sports Council and Commissioner John Swafford received the award for the Sports Business Executive of the Year Award from NCAA President Miles Brand. Congratulations to Commissioner Swafford and all the fine folks at the Atlantic Coast Conference. Well deserved recognition. Yeah, Johnson, terrific job. Here's the pass of El Newton that is complete. Ty Hill makes the receiver pay for it though. And that is Matthew Thomas complete for about a four yard game. The expansion excitement in ACC football you know, this season. Oh, what really a year incredible. it's been. It's been unbelievable. Virginia Tech in the driver's seat now. They only have one conference loss. They have two tough conference games to finish out there with Virginia and Miami. Second down. Clemson looking at a bold appearance if they can hang on to win. The pass too tall for. Corey Boyd. We look at our Aaron scoreboard. Well, North Carolina pouring it on. They don't want to get beaten by Duke. They want the victory bowl of Bell back in Chapel Hill. Looking to hang on and do it. Miami has had enough. <laughs> That's still a surprise today. The, the, the level of points against Wayne. Virginia by 10 over Georgia Tech. Oklahoma putting the wood to Baylor. And Boston College will be the newest ACC team next year. I'm angry today for the college football. Savell Newton has time, has a man open, it is complete, and that is Corey Boyd. Very well done. And that throw is right on the money. 33, ball at the 33 yard line, and it's good for a first down. Seven yard game. Savell Newton, it'd be interesting what uh, role he plays. Back to the wide receiver shot. What is expected to be a new coach come Tuesday. If that happens, I can promise you that's going to happen. Who holds? An announcement is expected on the future of the South Carolina football program on Monday. It's the end that Lou Holtz is rumored to be announcing his retirement. Here comes Savelle Newton. Back to throw. Pressure's on. Pass is complete. It's out there to Donzie Gray, but not for much. 50 year senior out of Waldorf, Maryland. 
set down by Tremaine Billy. ACC football from Jefferson Pilot Sports is brought to you in part by Chevrolet. Approaching the three o'clock hour here in the East. Second down, 10, 7.48 left to go. And this 102nd renewal of this rivalry between South Carolina and Clemson, led by the Clemson Tigers, who are looking to make it five wins in six years. Savelle Newton scrambling, being pursued there outside the pocket by Eric Coleman, and he manages to elude the rush out to the 39 yard line for five yards. Newton is elusive. He's got great feet. Now, he can make you miss if he gets out of the open grass. Scored five touchdowns this season. Yeah, well, I see what. You have and that, an and about 240 yards net, which isn't bad for a quarterback. Three yards of carry because you take his sack yardage off his uh, no, rushing good point. Third down five. Blitz is on. Newton runs out of it and throws a nice ball out there complete to Gauze. Andre Gauze complete to the 34 yard line. Well, he caught everybody off guard with that one. Brother of George Gauze gets out there and do clutch the territory, and this is their first venture there today. Comes out with a great presence of mind to see an open receiver. God's worked his way open in the right open space. Sometimes you choke it down right there. You let it happen. You got all that area there that's wide open. And then you, you make it happen. God's out of Conway, South Carolina. This will be the first play run by South Carolina out of Clemson territory. Isn't that amazing? Here we are at the 635 mark in the fourth quarter. Well, Newton on the keeper in the loss. Thanks to Charles Bennett and Clemson. They did score, but it was on a 54-yard pass. So that started in South Carolina. 6.20, the clock rolling. So Bell Newton up to the line. The Gamecocks here looking for something. A spark here, looking to take advantage of the Professor's field position. Low snap. Pressure on. Corey Gruber in pursuit, and he just throws that away. He was outside the pocket. He's up third down. Great pressure. Gruber is he is going to work his way into some kind of game award for the Clemson defense. Yeah. Almost he's, scored a touchdown. Yeah. Today. He's been a madman. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation and any use of it without the express permission of the Atlantic Coast Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. Steve Martin, Rick Doc Walker, Mike Hogwood at Memorial Stadium in Clemson, where Clemson leads South Carolina 29 to 7. South Carolina 4 14 on third down conversion. Savelle Newton looking for more than just first down, and he almost throws an interception. Ty Hill had it in his hands, a pass intended for Williamson. I like the idea. Williamson has shown me he's got playmaker ability big time. Yes, but the ball if you don't fade it It's got to be on his outside shoulder. You got I want to see one time today where they make Williamson go get it Because I think he's capable of it. I think he would but everything has been underthrown Fourth down coming no sense lining up for a field goal. It's too long a punt doesn't get you anywhere You need 12 you need 11 yards for first down you need pass protection And you're not going to get it. Savelle Newton, big strike, incomplete. Good idea. Yep. yep. And now we got some extracurricular activity out there. Well, this was bound to happen. And now Lou Holtz scrambles out on the field. And now both benches start to empty. You knew this was going to happen sooner or later. Uh oh, Justin Miller and Matthew Thomas are getting into it. And this is this is an ugly. Who's the idiot that took his helmet off? I mean, this is ridiculous. And I applaud the way the refs allowed it to not fast foster. But right now, you got to get police control on this. You've got a clench here. Yeah. You got to get police control. Yep. And uh, now, state police are out there on the field. Now there's more going on in the end zone, and now the state police have cordoned off the end zone, trying to. Well, they need mates. You got to get now. You got to get the sauce in. But oh, 32 out. South Carolina has just gone after Dwayne Coleman after the cordon of police out there. That's Dacus Terman who's done nothing today. Yeah. Sitting out with an injury. He comes out and lays a hay shaker on. And now they 
This is embarrassing, but I'll tell you what. Very embarrassing. The police have got to treat them like idiots now, like the rioters and billy clubs. Take them all out and pursue them, because there's no question in my mind this is uncalled for. Some of those guys over there didn't play they have not busted the great. Dacus Terman is one of them. He ran after you. He ran after Dwayne Coleman on a dead truck, took off after him, and hit him in the end zone. Well, he's a he hadn't played a lick. If not having the helmet on anyway. Yeah. You, I saw that. You felt this. You felt this. There's so many ingredients going on there today. I'm not sure what the status of this game is at this point. If you can continue it. Well, it's an ugly, ugly mark on the lose last regular season game, a Hall of Famer. They'll be embarrassed, you know, by this. It all started. And he didn't promote it. He tried to stop it from day one from the opening play. Yeah. He got after his people who were way out of control, you know, with a lot of the verbal antics. And again, Clemson played it on the field, played hard. I'm trying to get this one under control. There's Matthew Thomas. He was involved in it as well. Well, see, not, the film is not going to lie about this. No. And it all started. And now there's, now there's, now there's, it looks like the Gamecocks fighting among themselves. Now there is a, there is a Clemson assistant, it appears, who, or, or a security person, who is now coming out of there. And now the, the big problem is on the South Carolina sideline. And the South Carolina coaches are trying to get a handle on their players. The aim here is to clear the field and try to resume play. But I don't like the looks of this conversation at midfield. We got the officiating crew surrounded by policemen. I'm just not impressed down 29 to 7. The game a lot of these guys had more effort for non plays than plays. Tempers on both sides are pretty high. There was a, you know, Savelle Newton. Well, Newton was almost had to be carried off the field. Yeah, he went out, and there was one Clemson player, two Clemson players in the area, and then the South Carolina players in an attempt to protect their quarterback got a little rambunctious there. It appeared. Lou Holtz is in the middle of it now, and he's talking, trying to control his players. Police were nice. I mean, they really were. They tried. They were not abusive. But it, they, they, the way those kids acted, they should have sent dogs at them. See, that'll show you. You want to act like you are bad behind. I'll show you what it's like to be under intense pressure. A lot of cats out there, out of there, they were front. Had not bust a grape all day, hadn't played, and all of a sudden they got courageous. Tommy Biden in the middle of his huddle now. And now, game officials, th th this conversation that you're looking at right now is just, are we going to continue? What happens from here? Now the cadre of county and state police will move off toward the end zone. Doyle Jackson, there you see him in the white hat, is the referee. He's got to decide if this is worth continuing. Sure doesn't appear to be like there were enough of them. I'll tell you that. So well, I thought from watching the basketball game last night, I didn't think there were enough security. We're going to get to the point now we're going to have to bring squads out for the games. Yeah. Because someone, an innocent bystander, that's what you hate. Somebody who has nothing to do with this could be hurt. I hope this continues. The seniors here deserve to continue their last ball game, last home game. Clemson has the football, and play will resume after that little set two. Thank it you. appeared to me that it was all player among player. I didn't see any. Congratulations. First down. Congratulations to the fans here at Death Valley. They stayed in their seats. They were professional about they were adults in this situation. So I applaud this capacity crowd here in the stadium because they, they showed some maturity. 82,500, not an empty seat, and they watched all enraptured by the events on the field. Charlie Whitehurst will try to get back to football here. Here's Reggie Merriweather. Trying to pick up where he left off. Now this so thing starts off here. Punch to the face there. Yep, that's a Clemson player that starts it. He's down on the ground. Yeah, you already sacked him. Now they're pulling people off. 
and I'm pulling people off, then that's what happens. Yeah, and if the starters, if the people on the field are allowed to handle their business, I'm all for that. It's the guys in the clean shirts who have not done anything after pregame warm-up who now get, you know, religious. And they're involved in this thing. And that's where I hope someone takes action on it. So it looks like it started with a Clemson fist at the end of the play. Here comes the handoff. It goes to Merriweather. Merriweather ahead over the 40 to the 43 line, Jan. Rodriguez Wilson in on the tackle for South Carolina. Here as if it started with Clemson and South Carolina wanted to finish it. Our Aaron scoreboard. Miami has dumped Wake Forest. North Carolina is dumping Duke in the fourth. And Mississippi State leads Arkansas. They're just underway. Oklahoma romping past Baylor. Still time to go on the fourth there. Virginia Tech, Georgia, Virginia, Georgia Tech. On at it in Atlanta, Virginia by a touchdown in the third. Our score, Clemson 29, South Carolina 7. Just separated a brawl between these two teams. And now we've got a penalty coming up. And here's the penalty is against South Carolina, but the sin is going to be against Michael Collins. After he knows the penalty is, he starts raising his hands for the crowd, and the linesman can't find him soon enough to tell him to stop it. Right. Gamecock territory at the 41. We haven't had a lot of them either. No, we haven't. It's been a very and uh, and that whole that whole fracas we went through and had offsetting penalties. Imagine that. You know my theory <laughs> on offset penalties. I know. Why announce? It? Why announce? It? You can show some guts. Yeah, we didn't have guts to make call. someone or not. First and ten at the 41. Hand off Wayne Coleman. He got slugged in that ball, and he's up to the 38 yard line. That set is off for Lou Holtz on the sidelines in what could be his last regular season game. If the Columbia State reports are correct, it probably is. Word that now this is just informed sources say that he will continue to coach or coach his team through its bowl game, which will probably be likely this team will probably wind up in the Music City Bowl, one of the eight bowls that the SEC is affiliated with in Nashville. Clemson Tigers could be headed for Charlotte, could be headed for Orlando, and headed for a victory here. Dawes makes the initial stop on Blaine Coleman, and this play will be whistled dead. Good call by Doyle Jackson. It's all right. Let's just whistle this thing dead and let's not give anybody else a chance to get some licks in. Spark. As Tommy Bobbin looks on. Third down and now. About 11 left to go as we're at the 42 yard line of South Carolina. Handoff goes to Coleman. South Carolina is digging in now. No question. Boy, have they. Yep, they, they uh, came out after this uh, brawl and they've said, all right, no more. We punched our quarterback. It started a brawl. We both did some foolish things. Yeah, just three hours too late. Preston Thorne. Maybe they thought the game started late. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's <laughs> All of this is irrelevant to me. If, you, if you're that bad, then show it. Yeah. You know, this is not. You don't get scholarship for running your mouth. Yeah. You get your scholarship for playing and going to class. All that trash talking. You know, it's just they don't they don't give you a major. Well, my partner said the officials won both sides, but we knew it would get out of control, and then Clemson getting physical with. Speaking of, is Hulk okay? I think he is. He's down there. I have heard he's getting ready. Him, he's getting ready to be our star in post game. Got a timeout on the field with a minute 41 left to play. The Clemson Tigers here setting up, and we'll be back right after this. 
Tommy Batten and the Clemson Tigers now go on defense. They give up on downs. First and ten for South Carolina. And the new quarterback in the game now, Blake Mitchell. This is the fourth to take snaps this afternoon. And he gives the ball to Corey Boyd. And he takes the pile to the Clemson Tigers and an official with it. All the way to the Clemson 45 yard line. We understand from Mike Hogwood that both teams, in an effort to keep the peace here, at the end of the game, both teams are going to proceed to their locker rooms. There will be no meeting of the teams at midfield. The coaches will shake hands. The teams will be herded to the locker rooms to prevent further confrontation. Yeah. This game started in confrontation. Penalty against South Carolina. This game started in confrontation as the Clemson Tigers came down the hill past Howard's Rock. And when they got to the bottom, South Carolina was waiting for them, and uh, they were they were some pushing and shoving, and nothing broke out there. But it's been on the fringe all game long. South Carolina here with the ball, clock rolling, and South Carolina making no attempt, despite having three timeouts to stop it. I think everybody is just concerned. Let's get off the field and into the locker room, and let's plan for what's ahead. Both of our bowl appearances coming up. Here's Blake Mitchell. The throw pass is incomplete and tipped on the Clemson sideline. That stops the clock with a minute and eight left. But we have a flag down on the play. Now, what we don't need, and, and, and the other problem is, and, is a little work for Doyle Jackson to make the call. Blue Holtz looking on. There's a cordon of police in each end zone and, and, and the thing that we probably could do without this afternoon is fans rushing the end zone to celebrate and tear down goalposts. Yeah, well, for what? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well. But uh, hopefully there's enough police presence down there to prevent the crowd from getting out onto the field. But that's what we don't need right here right now. Because the, the thing is to get both of these teams off the field once there's no time. Blake Mitchell back to throw. Good throw. Good pass. Throw. Has it out there and it is nipped away. Intended out there for number 21, Devon Hill, and a great play made Monts. by 23, Devon Monts. Monts. The, uh, like all of the Tiger corners and safeties, they play the ball well. Yeah, they really do. You did. Let's go to the sidelines of Mike Hogwell. Steve, a couple of notes about the end of this game. First of all, there are collapsible goalposts here, and I'm told it takes right about 10 seconds to get the goalpost down, and that's what they'll do as soon as this clock hits 0 0. And you know, it's a tradition here at Clemson for the fans to come out on the field after the game, and I think there's no way to stop that. I think they still are, which is why they're concerned about getting these teams right away to the locker room. One minute to play. Second down and long here for Blake Mitchell looking into the sun of Death Valley. And his pass to Corey Boyd is a little too far. Stops the clock with 55 seconds left to play. So South Carolina, so Clemson is going to get themselves bowl eligible. And uh, the bowl possibilities, obviously, a uh, uh, BCS bowl will go to the conference champion. Clemson sits right in the middle of the conference, so they're looking at a possible trip to Charlotte. The Continental Tire Bowl, the Champ Sports Bowl, they could find themselves at. Blue Holtz's team will be going postseason as well. They're already bowl eligible. About 55 seconds away from being six and five, and stock the third destination would possibly be the Music City Bowl in Nashville. Here comes the handoff. Donji Gray is in his senior season getting another carry here as this rivalry is about to close for another year and the Clemson Tigers are about to take the fifth and sixth tries against the Gamecocks. Well, that man deserves to go out as a winner because he's been a winner. Lou Holtz now. The good news is that he'll get to influence hundreds of thousands of people now but he's not you just focus on one team. Exactly. Terrific motivation. Yes, he is. Given energy to be in that locker room before the game starts. Mitchell on the throw to the flats. It's too tall for the tight end. First uh, pass thrown to a tight end this afternoon. Rob. That's uh, David Lagos. 
<laughs> Seven seconds left to go. The cordon of police coming out. They made an announcement. They're going to take the goalpost down now. There'll be no further offensive action. One, they're taking one goalpost. The collapse of the goalpost is started in motion a little bit early. South Carolina Clemson's got the football. They're just going to take a knee, and this one will be over. Clemson Tigers get themselves bowl eligible as they come out with a strong performance and defeat the South Carolina Gamecocks by a score of 29 to 7. The players quickly exit the field. Both teams, the hostilities are over. The coaches are headed to the locker room. Horton, the police heads to the locker room. Let's go to the sidelines and Mike Hogwarts. Yeah, we're, we're, get, we're getting off the field pretty quick with the coach. First of all, congrats. We're bowl eligible. But yeah, I'm real proud of the team. I don't think it's ever been done in AC history to go from one and four to a bowl game. I was real pleased with the team. Happy for the seniors. And yeah, Reggie Bell, Merriweather, what a good day running the foot. He's really good running back. I agree. The line did a good job, too. I got to ask you about what this, how all this happened here at the end of the game. What's going on? I don't want to blame on anybody, but you know, the stuff on last night with basketball kind of, my guys watch that stuff and I wish it wouldn't happen, I apologize. You got a Gatorade bath and you have to feel good winning season, congrats. Hey, thank you, man. All right, that's Tommy Baden, we're all getting out of here. All right, we're back upstairs, Tommy Baden to the locker room. They probably would have liked to have been a little bit happier about the outcome, but of course the brawl that stopped this game at the 540 mark, 5 mark. Brought the reality of uh, what we see in sports today pretty much to the forefront here, even in Death Valley. But the Clemson Tigers win it 29 to 7 over the South Carolina Gamecocks. They are now bowl eligible, as are the Gamecocks of Blue Hole.